Cryptic, do you like the mustache? Yeah, the mustache is awesome, man. Do you like it, really? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't fit you, but I think the mustache is awesome. No. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> mustaches are great. Not on you. Your face, <laughs> not, not good. No, no, In no, no, general, no. mustache could be okay. On look, Junie, perhaps. <laughs> than on you. <laughs> you look amazing regardless, man. You look uh, amazing. All right, guys. Welcome to the next episode of Coffee Break. Super glad to have you here. We do an MMO podcast every single week on Friday with my good friend, Cryptic Villain, my good wife, Junie Vision, <laughs> and, uh, and we discuss systems, pros, cons of different MMOs. We compare, contrast, and talk about things in the gaming industry at the time. It's a new topic every single week, and this month has been crazy there's so much going on in the world of mmos and guild wars 2 is of course no exception for the first time in four and a half years i think it's been four and a half years since we've gotten an expansion this is really really big for uh the denizens of tyria for those of you guys who don't know i met juni vision my lovely wife in tyria i met my good friend cryptic in tyria i love guild wars 2 i've been waiting i've been hoping i have been uh, hoping against hope that this expansion is everything we've wanted it to be. And now we've had about, what, several days? I don't know, how many days? Uh, four days? To go mm -hmm. over this expansion, get our first impressions about what's... <laughs> not enough. Not, en not, not enough days, no. and that's true. Uh, but we have some first impressions to share, so we're going to be discussing uh, what we like, what we don't like, the systems, our concerns, and we're going to be answering your questions. Dejanu says, good wife. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, you want to throw something out there, we're going to be reading chat and interacting with you the entire time. So please uh, do that. It makes chat way more fun for us. I know you guys have a lot of feelings about this. Most of our community is Guild Wars 2, which is awesome. So uh, let's get into it. We have a comment and a concern my comment is um we're actually almost on five years since the expansion whoa yeah crazy and my concern is you have a bad wife because good wife means that you have a bad wife right where's the bad the term good wife is a thing right it doesn't well, necessitate actually, a bad wife actually, hold on the good wife was a television series yeah. and right I, that's oh, it i have a fun story about that so wait that's not coffee break topic that's true <laughs> <laughs> this is especially really not since i'm tv now okay? especially not since i'm reading the synopsis of the good wife and it says when a very public sex and political corruption scandal lands her husband peter in prison Listen, I don't know. This is not where we're going. Oh, it's God, not God. very Junie related. <laughs> That's fair. No, no, go ahead. Go share your story. Well, share the end story. of the story goes to the fact that back in many moons ago, I had a part-time job working on like sets and stuff. So she used I used to do like um, I used to do like stand-in work. Stand-in in work. Okay. Yeah. So anywho, when I was doing that on The Good Wife, um, it's where I found because I'm a huge fan of Willy Wonka. And the chocolate factory. Yeah, and me too. That is where I got to meet my fellow stand-in person at the time, who fellow was actually Mike TV, the oh. little guy from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The dude that goes in the kid. television. Yes. The kid that's got like the the pistols. Yes. So obviously, all grown up, like much older now. But he, <sighs> um, as a surprise, nobody knew. I about it, this. Nobody knew it was him. Basically, he ne never told anybody that he worked with that he was Mike TV. And um, then at Christmas, I think it was at Christmas time, he gave everyone printed out golden tickets with his signature on them. It was so. Uh, I it got was a golden cool. ticket. <laughs> I got a golden ticket. Do they have an English accent in that? Am I just putting that on for no reason? I don't know. <laughs> I got a golden ticket. I still have it around here somewhere. I'll have Do to you really? <laughs> Wait, no, we're losing viewers. Stop. I'll oh, stop I'm singing. So I'll stop singing. I promise. <laughs> okay, back to Coffee Break. All right, so <laughs> welcome to the uh, the next episode of Coffee Break, guys. Again, Cryptic Villain, Juni Vision. Love you guys. Thank you for being a part of our podcast. Uh, so this week, we're going to be discussing EOD, or End of Dragons. The expansion just came out on Monday. Um, so before we get into any of the details, can I just reiterate again how upset I am that out of four and a half to five years, somewhere in between there, a very long time, Guild Wars 2 came out on Monday, February 28th, and not 
2-22-2022 on a Tuesday for Guild Wars 2's new expansion. Can I just, can I get some booze in chat? I was just so sad. I feel like it's the greatest missed opportunity for a release date of all time ever. Hmm. Yeah? Am I alone? <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, Thank you, Danger. <laughs> Destiny 2 did it, so they, they released their expansion on a... Yes! You know, on it a, was a Tuesday! It was a Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what yeah. are the freaking odds of that? Sassy Cat posted on... Um, I didn't even think about it, but Sassy Cat posted on the day, on uh, 2.22 in the afternoon, on uh, 2.22.22, and said, make a wish. I was like, oh, crap, that's so cool. <laughs> You know, it's it's odd. Speaking about that, it's odd that they didn't want to release the expansion on that day, and yet, just a couple of days later, they released it. And they, they I, they didn't. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. But I feel like, I feel like this expansion could have used more play testing. I love this expansion. Don't get me wrong. I actually do like it. But don't you think it could have used more play testing? Has anyone completed a meta event at all? <laughs> well. Okay. Okay. So, uh, does the I, does the Zen? What was that place? The Shadow Forest. Does that count as no? Meta no, event? That's, not, that's not a meta. <laughs> event. That's not a meta. Event. Um. So I I think so. This is going to branch into a couple other mm -hmm. topics. Uh. But I should say, and I saw several posts about this on Twitter. Um. Basically, complimenting EOD because we've seen so many games come out with really messy launches. Um, I would say for stability's sake, right, which is where a lot of us sort of worry, am I going to be able to log in that day, right? Am I going to get kicked out constantly? Are there going to be crashes or story breaks that are not going, going to allow me to continue? These things really define a good or bad launch to me. I would say maybe you say play testing. Yeah, I get that. That's a little separate. But I think its launch was really good. I think like it was a very solid um stable launch in a way that we're just not used to these days i'm really pleased with that i was i was expecting not to really be able to play day one and i think a lot of you guys can relate to that right a new expansion comes out or a new game comes out you know maybe take the day off after the day that it's released right because day mm -hmm. one you might just be pissed all day i think a lot of like long-term gamers kind of have that feeling uh ingrained but what Cryptic is talking about is that a lot of the meta events are failing. And if you guys remember, does anyone remember a another experience where this happened with with Guild Wars Two? Another uh, another expansion came out, and there was some miss, you know, un unbalancing happening with with the meta events. I don't know how long it took you guys to finish Serpent's Ire in POF when that expansion came out. But mm. it was atrocious. Like, I promise. Oh, not only that, but in HOT, the same thing happened with uh, the Chalk Garant. No oh, one yeah. could beat the Chalk Garant. That took months, like, for people to get that, that was, down. That was, a, like, a learning thing, right? Like, uh, most of these meta events are failing because the maps are empty or okay. have been previously. Uh, well, okay. So, the, you're right about that. And that's another issue we need to talk about, right? That's, that's. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to I want to call that a whole... A whole separate uh, thing. A whole separate thing, and that se that separate mm -hmm. thing is like perception of success. Yeah. Uh, and I'm concerned about Guild Wars 2's uh, success for the expansion simply because of perception mm -hmm. of success as a result of that. Uh, also, Xander the Mesmer with a big raid coming in. Welcome, guys. This is our Coffee Break podcast. We're discussing EOD today. Uh, so thank you very much for coming in. Uh, we're talking about basically the stability of the launch of EOD and also the uh, the balance of the meta events. So I, I so I don't have as much experience with it. Granted, mm -hmm. the expansion's only been out for four days, but from what I gather, so we said the shot Garant was really hard when the game when that expansion first came out because it required a certain level of play style change from what people were used to. Yeah, right? we mm -hmm. actually had to coordinate together like big meta style events. That was new in HOT. So we really had to coordinate. People had to learn the fight. People had to get good. Mm -hmm. uh, that's perfectly fine. When Serpent's Ire came out, it was ridiculous, right? The balance was a little wrong. It took some time to get, to get it right. Even with enormous groups, mm -hmm. that fight didn't take the same level of coordination and yet was still like way harder. Um, this one, from what I gather, it's difficult to get enough people together because the zones are feeling pretty empty and there are enormous CC changes right cc is being failed in meta events it's defining the ability to succeed or not and and i think that that's going to bring us into another topic also that the game seems to be going for 
I don't know, what would you call it? Like a renewed focus on some tertiary mechanics of Guild Wars 2, right? They don't want to tank and spank anymore. They're really focusing on CC. They're really focusing on combo fields. I think this is like a fascinating change. How much of that do you think is uh, bad balancing versus people needing to wrap their mind around focusing on different things like the necessity of bringing enough CC and really focusing on it? I think it's i think it's good balancing i mean i i, I don't know I, i'm concerned that some of the changes that they're doing here with a more emphasis on cc um and combo fields and um i believe in the last uh, the, the the last bet event um i'll try to avoid name you know saying things for spoiler reasons but in the last bet event which i i haven't done myself either but I've, I've i've talked to people that done it um there's also like a like not really a jumping puzzle, but like a route you have to take that like mm -hmm. causes issues. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, between uh, um, uh, between those three things being like adding more of these like challenging elements, I think it's good for the game. Um, I'm mm -hmm. concerned that it may just be a band aid on some of the larger issues. Only time will tell about that. Uh, but the more challenged we're introduced and like we talk about this heart of thorns heart of thorns was revolutionary for the game because it introduced all of these new challenging things that players had to become accustomed to right mm -hmm. just coordinating in meta events sure. um, the challenge of raids the difficulty of mobs just hitting harder and you having remember people health. complaining when it first came out getting yes, wrecked by yes. uh just like pocket wrappers and stuff yeah, and, and, uh, just what are those people. those shadow things that like teleport around and blind yep. you and stuff like people were not ready for the difficulty yes. jump Yes, and I, I'm. I think Guild Wars Two needs another difficulty jump, not because it's what the player base needs. Uh, that's what we needed for Heart of Thorns. Um, it, that's not what's needed here. The reason that we need difficulty jump is power creep has just happened. We yep. have just out power creeped. What I mean, you go back to Heart of Thorns now, and you laugh at Pocket Raptors, right? Like you, you yes. literally stand there and laugh at them. Do you so, think that that is entirely the creep, or also, I mean, that that's the factor we're discussing, right? Or is it people have gotten used to it? Maybe maybe it's just a harsh change every time something new is added. Like, do I do I just flail myself into mobs anymore? Like, no. Like, I uh, I feel like I'm better at it now. In fact, even in HOT, yeah. I felt like when I first walked in, I was trash and I was getting killed by everything. And then by the end of HOT, right prior to prior to creep having too big a role, I think like there's always this sort of m moment of adjustment. H.O.T. Mm -hmm. was the biggest, right? Because there was no difficulty. <laughs> like Nothing in, in Guild Wars 2 was really hard exactly, before yeah. that happened. Uh, and if we're going to talk specifically about the, uh, the meta events, I think it's a real issue to discuss, which is the size of the maps and how, how many people are in your map. I found it really fascinating. Reckham Jones, I'll be waiting to bring up your comment there. He said EU is packed, so it must be an NA thing. So what does that mean exactly? For, the, for those of you guys who uh, maybe haven't noticed it yourself, we're walking through these zones empty. I mean, it feels like not just that the expansion just came out. It's not just that it's not that way where everything is packed and you're having to wait in line for like NPCs and stuff like it is in other games. But it's like this is old, obsolete content. I'm walking through these giant cities and I see no one. Yeah. Um, and I know for a fact that it's not just that no one is playing this game. Anecdotally, I can tell you that every person that I've talked to has loved this expansion, mm -hmm. but it is, it is bizarre to be walking around by yourself all day, the day after this giant expansion has released that we've been waiting four years for. Not just one day, I would say three days out. The, the, uh, last night was the first night that I actually felt like there were people around me. It still wasn't enough. The meta event still failed. <laughs> so it still was not enough. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I, like I said, I haven't made it to the last map. I, I'm just finished the, um, the second map. There's, there's four major maps. Echo Vault? Yep. Uh, yeah. So I just made it to Echo Vault. Um, so I haven't, I haven't gotten to the last one. I heard people are actually completing the meta events there now. Um, yeah. Yeah. but Without a doubt, you can forget the difficulty that is a part of it for some of these meta events. That is a, a whole, you know, a whole nother issue, uh, or maybe not issue. I think it's fine. Um, but just the empty maps is the biggest was the biggest impediment. Forget meta events. Uh, uh, I couldn't even accomplish simple events that just required a few people, like kill the Leviathan event. That event that is in on every like all all the maps with water. I, I haven't been able to do that. Not a single because like there isn't enough people. Get good, um, cryptic. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I am playing an untamed ranger, so there is oh, so come on, yeah. Well, 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 well like, we need to put that in perspective first. Okay. Yeah, I, it's not a lot of damage there, but still, I mean, yeah. it's it's frustrating. It's impacting um, the game. It's impacting the experience of the game. Yeah, right? like for for better and for worse, I would say. To, il to illustrate my point. Do you remember when Heart of Thorns came out? I, I, I didn't do. do this with Path of Fire. With Path of Fire, I literally just played through the story. I didn't really take part in many events. I just played through the story. But mm -hmm. when Heart of Thorns came out, we went out there. We explored the jungle. Yep. And I did every event that I came across, all the adventures, every little thing. I was so interested in it, and they were all fun. And they or there was tons of people doing it with me. I was watching people yep. fail the adventures, the people doing like the, you know. You oh, know, the, the adventures were yeah. added for HOT. I loved that. You, you do you remember the 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 mushroom adventure? Watching people turn into a mushroom and running it, like falling yes. off and failing. That was so much fun. Uh, 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 the fungus among us. Yes, fungus among yes. us. Yes, yes, <laughs> the exactly. best name ever, yes. dude. I love that so much. It was amazing, and I I loved that shared experience. And you could have some of those same shared experiences in EOD. It's a good expansion. It's there for us to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm literally standing in the middle of a map. With, with the meta happening and there isn't yep. a soul around me yeah and I, I think that we should talk or at least briefly mention that this is one of the greatest things about guild wars 2 right you guys mm -hmm. have heard me say this before i say it all the time guild wars 2 deserves a lot of credit that it doesn't get and one of the things because i've been playing mmos since everquest in 2000 like i've been playing them since they've been around and the greatest thing that guild wars 2 changed the fundamental experience that was changed was the first time i walked into tyria I had to relearn what it meant to be around other people. In other games, unless they're in your party, people around you are bad. This is an MMORPG, right? And you're supposed to like feel pretty epic when you got a ton of people around you. But in most games, that meant kill stealing, uh, difficulty getting quest NPCs, inability to uh, to fight enough monsters to to level up, uh, uh, fighting over challenging each other for resource nodes or mm. or quest pickups. Right, like other people being near you was a bad thing. Guild Wars Two changed that entirely, and it really took me a long time to get used to that. Seeing somebody else, they're not stealing any of your nodes. They only represent something good for you. They actually make it so events are more likely to complete or progress to another step. They're going to aid you in your tasks, whatever they are, and not hinder them at all. So, I, like I fight that feeling from old MMOs, like, oh, I've got this world to myself and this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But if you're walking through the world and you come across a cool event and you're unable to complete it because you're cryptic and on a bunny thumper and there's no one near you, that's a total <laughs> bummer, right? Like that actually takes something away from your ability to enjoy the content. So I think this has two factors here. One is that it is affecting the way in which we're able to experience the content, right? Maybe we don't do that quest. Maybe we don't do that mm. event. So we're robbed of an experience. Or we cannot complete the, the meta event because there's not enough people. We mm. can't even get the final mount, which is gated behind mm -hmm. a, uh, a giant meta that must succeed in order yes. to get the big mount that everyone is looking for. So yeah. there, this is actually hindering the experience um, and I think also, and this is something that really needs to be focused is that the perception of a game's success often defines its level of success. I've said it for years. All you have to do to make a game die is say game dead. Like, oh, you, all you're going to need to, the perception of the game affects yeah. that. And so when a brand new expansion comes out, especially after it's been a, four and a half years, almost five years since the expansions come out. So we have a lot of expectations. Um, and B, uh, basically after everything that happened in ArenaNet last year, when we were really concerned for the company's longevity, mm -hmm. uh, all those things, like we're putting a lot of our eggs in this basket. Oh, so the yeah. perception of how successful this expansion is, is a big deal, right? So when, when no, someone is not informed is and they're running around break. and they see no one, that's worrisome. Yeah. Sorry, Cryptic, what? No, no, I was going to say, I think this expansion is make or break for ArenaNet. So it, you're absolutely right. It's very worrisome. And perception means a lot um, to give another perception example. And you'll love this one. Uh, David Tennant, Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. Doesn't she look tired? <laughs> oh, yes. No, that's the... <laughs> 
<laughs> and that that sing that one sentence single handedly uh, made like the prime minister lose the election or whatever, right? Yep, yep. Um, he, he basically so, brought down the prime minister's entire campaign, re-election yep. campaign, just by saying, "Doesn't she look tired?" To to her yep. own aid, not even uh, an an, op- an opposition. So right, so perception means perception a lot. is huge. Yeah. yeah, and especially in this arena uh, where people really kind of build on each other's voices, right? And everyone is looking at this game with concern uh, for that reason. So to me, walking around in these empty zones is concerning. It actually makes me worry. And even if it's not true, right? Maybe there's like a billion maps out there and and it's actually doing really well. I don't know that, but my worrying for the game does impact the way that I look at it, right? So this uh, this is sort of like a big thing. Uh, let's see. Phoenix says, I see two separate issues. One is the emptier maps, right? Which we're discussing for metas that aren't Dragon's End. Two is gating the turtle behind the difficult event. Uh, like Dragon Stand, the map was entirely locked behind Garant. Right. So that that those are the things that we were just discussing. And it is really impactful. I think a lot of people are sort of struggling with this. This is something that... Um, I, I know that they've, can anyone back me up on this? They, they spoke about it, right? Mm-hmm. Ruby mentioned something. She was like, we're aware of an issue, should be fixed. Yeah, I- What I, is it though? I'm curious I, how they're going to fix it though. The way that she worded it in her post though, was that she's aware that it is an issue, that the players see it as an issue, but it was a deliberate choice by them to limit the amount of people, however they did it, whether it was by not closing servers, or we don't know how they did it, but however they did it, yep. limit the amount of people that could be in a map. Um, and I don't know about EU. I haven't played on EU since I first started playing this game. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, in NA that meant the maps, especially the first two days, I had day three, it got better day four last night when I was playing it, it looked like it was much better. Um, uh, but the, the first two days completely empty, like dead empty. And to the point where we were running into each other, Merrick, like yeah, over and over. In as, fact, I kept was, seeing my friends yes, and that worried me. <laughs> that, that was what worried me the most because that didn't happen in POF. It didn't happen in Heart of Thorns to my knowledge. I mean, I have yep. a bigger friends list now than I did back then, but we just kept running into each other over and over and over. And mm-hmm. that made me think this is maybe this, the game is just dead. Maybe there's nothing, nobody playing this. Right. So I, that's going to bring me to the next subject here. Um, and I don't want you guys to think that we're harping on the negative side of VOD when we get I into the meat VOD. and potatoes. Yeah, let me just preface, Junie, Cryptic, and I love this expansion. In fact, I'm going to go into how surprised I am at how much I love this expansion. They really surpass my expectations. Mm-hmm. But not, not only was it a missed opportunity to release on 2 22 <laughs> right? Not only that. But I'm going to go out on a limb here, give a hot take. I think this might be the single worst time in the yeah. last four years to release an expansion. Absolutely. Absolutely is. It is mm-hmm. a terrible time yep. to release an expansion. So not only has everyone that I've talked to uh, who plays Guild Wars 2 or likes Guild Wars 2 has, has said good things about it because they have. Literally everyone. I don't know anyone who's like, oh, this expansion sucks. I'm not playing this anymore. Mm-hmm. I've not heard that once. But even with my extensive list of Guild Wars 2 friends that I'm looking at on Discord, right? These people that I know I met in Guild Wars 2, they love Guild Wars 2. They've been waiting for new content. They've been complaining about a lot, lack of content this entire time. All those people, I scroll up and down my Discord and what do I see? The day of, the day after the release of an expansion we've been waiting for for four and a half years, I see some of my friends playing the new Destiny 2 expansion. I see people playing the new Endwalker, Final Fantasy expansion. I see people playing Elden Ring. I see Lost people Ark. playing Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is maybe one of the craziest times in the history of online multiplayer gaming that I can remember in, in memory. I, it's, it is insane to me. So even these people that I know enjoy the expansion, even people that I know have been looking forward to this, mm-hmm. they are so spread thin. Day of, I was watching people hop off to go play the other game they were really excited about. I mean, like, what is the, what was the the game plan here? Mm-hmm. I just, I, I think I get so uh, emotional about it and upset about it because I want the game to succeed more than most. I love Guild Wars 2. I want this to be the saving grace, right? And for me, it's like, if we're going to wait four and a half years, dude, wait another six months. I don't know. I just, it, I would have waited for a bigger fanfare. Also, I think it's on Steam now. Question mark. 
Like, where was the where were the fireworks? Like, yeah, I thought I, that was going to be a I big thing. I don't think it is on Steam. I think somebody the, said it was. I thought it was, but then I looked it up. It looks like it's on Steam, but they haven't released it yet. It it doesn't. It's just sitting there. Um, um, I'm looking now. <laughs> yeah, Guild Wars Two. So Guild Wars Two is on Steam right now, but it just says to be announced. You can just add it to your wish list. So yeah, I see free. But to be announced, yeah. Well, oh, they canceled the street, uh, the Steam release to focus on EOD. Yeah, they they did that last year, yeah. right? It was gonna it was gonna be a big release on Steam, and they decided not to. And I think most of us felt like that was a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it, we, it, they were releasing it on Steam at maybe the lowest point that ArenaNet had ever had. This was oh, yeah. last year when everything was going bad, mm -hmm. um, and and they had finally like just announced right after that we're gonna do EOD. It's like. Yes, put all your eggs in the one basket. Let's make EOD kick ass and let's then release it on Steam. Have like a, you know, that that that's a form of marketing. I think mm -hmm. what we always sort of complain about with Guild Wars 2 is it's like this hidden gem that nobody knows about. Uh, but like any opportunity to like drum up some enthusiasm, like throw it on Steam, right? This is an opportunity to get some big hype behind the game. And, you know, I, just, I, I think this is a factor. I think it was a bad decision uh, I, I wish they would have waited. Yeah, or I wish done they it earlier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they definitely. I mean, I, this might be. A, this is probably not a popular opinion at all, but I, I do understand why it's not good that there's no players around in these maps. But it did actually give me a pretty unique experience when we were playing it that it. first day. Yeah. I mean, just on an immersion level, I, I for this expansion, I actually turned off, and I don't usually do this, but I turned off enemy, NPC, player, ca character nameplates, all of those, to make it seem a little bit more immersive, um, because I expected to just have a sea of player names everywhere. Um, it's kind it makes it feel more like you're the actual commander so maybe that's what they were going for and they really did uh you know keep these they have like tons and tons of instances okay yeah, so I, maybe that's what they intended but it certainly hasn't panned out that way <laughs> yeah i mean i don't, well, I don't know I don't know for meta events right like you can't do that for meta yeah. events so yeah. you have to fix the meta events portion but there is that. a meta event in every zone right so this is important from the beginning immersion is great but if people can't complete the content they want to complete, it's as bad as a story being broken. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. Like, I mean, I wonder if they could have done instances where when you walk near a meta event, then all of a sudden you see other people. Maybe. I mean, that I think your I think your solution is actually probably a good one, especially with the, all the jade tech that is everywhere. It it works in the city, but outside of the city, it is kind of um, like it's useful in, in a lot of cases, but it is cluttering you know like it's mm -hmm. i don't know it takes away from the beauty especially the name plates that's what i the main thing is so i think your solution actually kind of solves some of those issues juni um it may be the best solution um but i i'm not to change the, the subject but you were talking about feeling like the commander um obviously we don't want to talk about story spoilers here but if anybody who's played the story with uh someone else um and you are the person joining the yep. story you can't do anything <laughs> nope uh, and we we've I mean that's that's not just EOD right that's just like the Guild yes. Wars two storytelling experience like we, we've been doing that for years. Yes, that's what the American I have a lot. I, I turned of over, Do you want to be the commander of this one? Like I was last time. She's we like, used nah, just, to. Just yeah, we used to swap back and forth in previous expansions. Sometimes I would just be like, hey, no, it's fine. I'll just like come in as the second person. This expansion so far, we have actually been unpartying and going in alone. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been it's been better because it makes you feel a little bit more connected. I mean, if you want to know the truth, like these days, and especially like coming from Final Fantasy, right? Uh, or even World of Warcraft because of the way they do storytelling. I, I think while I might be able to dream up ways that that storytelling experience in a cooperative way could be done better, I'm just kind of grateful that it exists at all. Yeah. I think that's the overarching feeling that I feel. I, this is not on a list of complaints. That's like way down the list because for me, the ability to go through story, because you get credit. Maybe you don't say anything. Maybe you don't get talked to or pointed at or whatever is going on, but you get credit for that story completion. So you and your wife or your girlfriend or your best buddy or whatever, you guys can actually do story content together. In World of Warcraft, there's not that indiv individualized story content. Like it's very, you're not the commander. You know what I mean? Yeah. In Final Fantasy, you're totally the commander. 
uh, the warrior of light. But every five seconds, you have to de-group and go into a uh, solo instance to do story content. So mm. as, as far as that goes, yeah, I agree. It could be done better, but I, I really do. I like I like the, the opportunity to play a co-op experience. Yeah, and the story is good. Um, I, I, you know, we won't go into spoilers. Good. Good. Uh, it's I, really good. It's stunning. I, like with how lackluster I have felt like it's been yeah. for a little while. Oh, yeah. I am stunned at how into the story I am. I, I, I mean, that is the biggest, uh, I think that is the biggest thing for me is that it compared to what, how, like we've just been nose diving on story, um, mm -hmm. in these last few years, uh, that this story is way better than what it was, what we've been getting previously. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually interested and invested in the characters. Um, yes. Yes. Who's your favorite I, character? Uh, I can't say. Spoilers. What? Sorry. Oh, no. Yeah. There, there's a couple characters I really like that I feel like are spoilers. Yeah, that would be a spoiler. Yeah, um, that's true. But uh, I, I will say one thing, though. I, I, I nitpick at stories. I always do. Um, so That's I'm going to, I'm going to set aside the nitpicking. I'm going to set aside the nitpicking so with the nitpicking aside. This is a great story with the nitpicking in included. It's, it's just a good story setting aside the nitpicking. This story still has one problem, even though I think mm. it's a great story. I, I think arena net still has problems writing villains. I won't elaborate on that because of spoilers, but do you guys also feel that overall arena net has had this problem writing, like how to write a villain's motivations? Um, how to express them to the player to make them feel empathy and care for that villain? Well, maybe not empathy and care, but like an understanding of motivation. Yeah, yeah like background yeah, motivation exactly. for yeah, what they're yeah. doing. I, I don't just want a comic villain, and I'm not saying yeah. that's what we have here in, in EOD, but there's it's kind of remnant of that. You know what I mean? And 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 yeah. Guild Wars Two has always struggled with that. I mean, always. <laughs> I think all the way back to Heart of Thorns, you know, Mordremoth was just kind of this enigma. We didn't, we, we never really interacted with him. <laughs> I mean, so that that's true, but I believe like, at least with the Elder Dragons, like the Elder Dragons themselves are forces of nature. They're elemental, right? Like I think part of their allure was that they were so above and beyond mortal ambition right mm -hmm. it wasn't as if it was something that he they were doing for some diabolical plot to take over the world these were these were shadows of the colossus monsters right these giant forces of nature that are just wrecking because that is how they were designed in fact we're finding we're finding out more about that in this story than we ever had before it's it's mm -hmm. fascinating actually to see to see where that comes from i i i'll just tell you guys right now and lara's in chat hi lara thank you so much for the raid uh, Lorenity has been playing, uh, Final Fantasy. And so I can, I can say I've been getting like diabolical Lalafell vibes. <laughs> like you just learn not to trust people that are under two feet tall. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, just absolutely maniacal. Oh, so I, I, I don't know, dude, like I, I, I see what you're saying. And if it mm -hmm. was a novel, maybe, uh, it would be, it would be a thing for me. Uh, I, I kind of like the elements that have been connected to past story. I know that mm -hmm. we're not, we don't want to get too much into detail, right? But like my Trin, that story is mm -hmm. awesome. The involvement yeah. oh, of yeah. That's Anka and, and the relation with the Thaumanova reactor, right? Mm -hmm. And the, and the Aether Blades and the stuff like that. Like I've been enjoying those elements coming up. By the way, now that we have a hundred people in chat, how many people caught uh, my Trin's vibrator? in the uh in her apartment i, I just, just i know I, I don't listen it's guild wars 2 it's they did it i didn't do it it's there <laughs> did you guys did you guys catch that that was the thing in I, fact i, I, I want to give that. a shout out to arena Net in general there's been more natural speech more cursing yes. more direct dialogue more inclusion and more risque elements yeah. Uh, yeah. No, yes. dude. I've seen some people not believing me in chat, but it's there. <laughs> when you go to her room, you see all of her cats, and you see the kitty litter in the little kitty litter thing, and you find what is what is definitely what I said a moment ago that my wife oh, is okay, already mad at me for saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said it once, and she got really upset. Let me. I got. I actually. I actually have a picture because I posted it in disbelief in my Discord last night. So, Cryptic, you talk true. for a second while I find it. 
I mean, it, it, they definitely are being more, I don't want to say progressive. Maybe that's not the right word. But oh, it is. I mean, oh, maybe pretty, maybe not only progressive, but also progressiveness. We'll talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the speech is very more natural. Um, it, everything, uh, everything just feels like you are part of a world when you're hearing other people talk. Um, and even just random NPCs, like that's definitely something I give them complete credit for. Um, and even NPCs that you interact with later, I found it funny. Uh, I can't say their name because of spoilers. They actually are like, Hey, are you lost? Like, can I just guide you to places you may need to go to? Mm -hmm. So it was just really, I just found that very interesting that they are, um, you know, they see you, the characters around you, see you as a part of the world instead of just, you know. I don't yep. know, I, just this mythical commander or whatever walking through the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like they've gotten good at storytelling, even just in the cutscenes, the way the characters interact. It feels more cinematic, doesn't it? Like, they're, like they got these camera angles. You're looking at their mouths moving in this, weir in this weird way. Like, you're coming up upon a conversation that is happening in private, and they're, like, speaking. This is, It feels more like a movie than it ever has. Mm -hmm. uh, so the immersion level is there right away. I love all the characters, right? Like none of the characters in this game. I, I don't know, man, like Timey can carry it by herself. I just love her. She's just absolutely amazing. Timey and Gorik are just incredible. But so far where I am in the story and I'm, I'm at about where you are, Cryptic. I just got to Mori Village in the southeast of Echo Vault. Uh, it's just really good. Yeah, I see Lara saying it was just a mystery machine. Yeah, it's a a vibrating mystery machine under a pile of clothes. And when you reach for it, she goes, "Hey, don't touch that." <laughs> it was listen. It's just it's it's good. Um, but to speak about the 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 being more progressive, I mean, we should talk about the fact that there is an absolutely indisputable non-binary character. Right. Like that, that's sort of a huge thing. Like they're, they've always been progressive. There are lesbian relationships. There are um, homosexual relationships of all kinds. There are all sorts of different uh, things being included. But I think this is probably one of the first times or definitely the most direct that there has been the inclusion of a obviously indisputable non binary they, them pronoun thing. Like they, ArenaNet makes effort on all of these fronts. And so, you know, like I, I think that that deserves at least some some comment. Hmm. Phoenix said there's a non-binary uh, character in Lion's Arch. Ah. Perhaps. I, I, I've always thought ArenaNet has been good with that kind of stuff. Um, and not just mm -hmm. good on both fronts, right? Because they were bigger for, than that 10 years ago. Yeah, good for being progressive, good for including this in your game, but also it just feeling like it's a part of the world. There you know? it is. It's yeah. just a yeah. part of the world. This is just normal. They're not beating you over the head with Ex it. Yep, exactly. Like because this is what it should be. It should just be normal. This is just absolutely normal. This is a part of life. Nobody should feel like it's uh like it's bad. Nobody should feel like it's forced. Mm -hmm. This should be this should be inclusive. And I feel like I feel like Arena that really does that very well. Oh yes. aid worker Saya. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. I did I've not seen that before. Yeah, Royal OMG, Arena Nets hearts for for the inclusion. Absolutely, dude. That's you know, in, in the world we live in today, it's it's uh it's awesome to see a gaming company that we all love uh being at the forefront of that. Absolutely. Especially when you can get really mad at some other gaming companies right now for some <laughs> similar things that are just really, really, really bad. <laughs> yeah, the, the world we live in, man, it's uh let's <laughs> I know. But it's a should, different podcast. It's a different <laughs> so. podcast, and we should move on to something that is not as decisive as that, but maybe a little bit. Fishing. Fishing! Oh my gosh. The fishing is so good in this. Actually, game. I'm sorry, we're gonna end the stream right now so oh, I can just wait, go fishing. What? No, stop. Fishing. Okay. So <laughs> Okay, I mean, well, let's actually, Judy start. Your, your feelings have, on on fishing. On fishing. I, I mean, I do have some plans of when Merrick streams Guild Wars 2 that I will have a little tiny corner of my gameplay, which will be fishing. You mean like the in the bottom right corner where you yes, are right now? Yes, all fishing all the time. You know, I'm uh, 24 hour Judy's fishing stream. Obsessed with fishing. Like, she, she mean, likes fishing in every game. She likes fishing in real life. She made a fishing, fisherman character, fisherwoman in D&D. &D. You're, 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 you know, you're I know. Like this woman a fish. Yeah. And none of it is planned. So it must be like the subconscious, like, yeah. fishing, like, mm -hmm. uh, passion that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think it's excellent. You know, it's, it, and it keeps surprising me. So when I first saw the fishing, I was like, oh, okay, this is just like a horizontal version, slightly easier than Stardew Valley. But they really add 
but engaging. But I mean, Stardew Valley's fishing is really engaging too. Pirates. But then all no. of a sudden they kept adding more things. For instance, you know, the boats. I think that's fantastic. Just being able to like be on the boats. Mm -hmm. wonderful addition which really added to the fishing the way mm -hmm. they have the different sites the way they've incorporated the fishing into the maps and into the world and I think really maps. and previous maps really brings desert fish. It, like it adds something to it it is not just the mini game mm -hmm. which is the case in many other things like stardew valley well okay many other things like stardew valley and but e let's compare to Scroll, other mmos okay so elder scrolls online nope. they're fishing Yep, every other game has got fishing. None of them is it a mini game. Right. Um, I I was level. thrilled about this. Ooh. I don't know how many of you guys mm -hmm. play Stardew Valley, but to, I don't actually like Stardew Valley. I don't knock it for anyone who likes it. <laughs> Junie plays the crap out of it. I I don't enjoy it, but I love the fishing. Like the little mini game is just a saving grace for me. I didn't know what to expect with fishing, right? I mean, we should talk about it. HOT, that comes out, we talked about it earlier. It redefined the game, not just in difficulty, right? They're like, let's do raids. Let's have all the monsters kick your butt mm -hmm. all of a sudden. Let's up the difficulty level of this whole game. And HOT revolutionized the way in which we experience the beautiful worlds that ArenaNet makes, right? Like the world designers for ArenaNet are top notch. Mm -hmm. Break every other game, in my opinion. And the 3D verticality of the game was added with HOT, right? It sort of redefined the entire game. POF mounts, right? Oh, yeah. Or what I've been calling the joy of movement. In this game, just getting from point A to point B. Look, I'll give I'll give the best example ever. When you get a new quest and you open your map and you're like, oh God, it's so far away. I'm like, yes. Like mm -hmm. I enjoy the travel. I'm going to roller beetle as far as I can. And then I'm going to get to the highest peak and I'm going to griffin my way over there. Like the joy of travel mm -hmm. makes it fun on long distance trips instead of a pain in the butt. And that was created by POF. Mm -hmm. The new expansion comes out and they're like, we redefined the game twice. We're going to do it again with fishing. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what I expected, but I probably expected to hate it. I think I was really geared to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. And the mini game has added so much, not just the fact that there is a mini game, but the mini game increases in difficulty, right? Based on the difficulty of the fish that you're catching. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the only game that, like Junie said, that has a boat that you can go out into the ocean. This, as far as I know, it's the only MMO that allows you to do that. Be and you could just sit there and have a blast with this. I, I, for me, it's ten out of ten. They nailed yeah. fishing. Why are you yeah. laughing at? <laughs> well, like you said though, right? Be, because Guild Wars Two has always really gone above and beyond to make mm. the world immersive and to make exploration rewarding. Right? Yes, we talked about yes. this last week on the podcast uh, mm. in regards to Lost Ark, how they really kind of tried for that as well under the the fact that they're you know not a traditional MMO, mm. uh, but. Even with Guild Wars 2, and uh, this isn't this isn't really a spoiler. Um, well, I was in one of the maps just last night, and I was running around, and I saw this rock, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go look at this rock." For some reason, it just called to me. Great story. <laughs> the rock was calling to me, and <laughs> I was not disappointed because when I got to that rock, it turned into a treasure chest, and that oh. makes exploration really cool. I think that's fantastic that they put that in. That's a That's, sweet story, Junie. That, that, really <laughs> that was such a Junie yeah, story, it was, wasn't it? It was, it was. freaking adorable. Um, I want to I wanna shout out Raukion, his, his first time chatter. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. He says, I'm fishing since 1 a.m. It's now 4 a.m. here to catch only one fish, and I'm still here. I'm crying. <laughs> so obviously, there are some fish enthusiasts out there. There's a lot of collections, right? Achievements. Uh, Guild Wars 2 is really good at that completionism stuff, right? It gets us excited to go and do that kind of thing. I saw uh, Knight, our buddy Knight, was talking about the angler hat and the angler vest or whatever that makes it look like you're actually a fisherman. Mm. I think they they put the elements in there to really make that system fun. And like I said, they went backwards. I was going through a uh, POF to get uh, hero points. And I couldn't help myself. I was on the, I was like trying to rush, get all my hero points done so I could get the new release back and then go back to the expansion, right? I didn't want to be in POF. I wanted to be in Cantha. But as I'm running from, H from, from HP to HP, I stop and I see rare desert fish. I'm like, what? <laughs> There's desert fish? And I like I ran over and I started fishing. It is just an enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. Hats off to ArenaNet. I don't know. There, there was a board meeting somewhere, right? You got to think about this. Somewhere in the office of ArenaNet, they were like, guys, 
It's been years. We have to do another expansion. We need a game changer. We've got to save everything. Ideas. And someone said fishing. And then the room said, yes, let's do this. And like, I just can't believe that that's true. And it ended up being awesome. Like, you got to give him points for that, man. That blows my mind. So, I mean, I love, I love fishing. Um, I do think that is the best implementation of an active fishing system. We've talked about this before. As much as I love fishing, I would have loved there to have been a passive option too. Just something that I could like, throw my like other out there. Yeah, like other MMOs. Like something I can throw my line out there and just sit back and, you know, maybe watch some people sailing by on the ships or, you know, like, um, I don't know, uh, you know, just eat a sandwich or something, you know, do something. <laughs> you know, watch, up, drink a watch beer. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like do something, do something, uh, you know, else while I'm doing this kind of relaxing, you know, thing. Because let's be honest the 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 harder the harder fishing spots can be especially if you don't have the fishing power yet can be not relaxing they can be kind of intense right like you yes. really gotta get on your game and i so, was thrilled for that i i think probably yeah. because i was so used to other games very slow mm -hmm. pointless feeling fishing i'll oh, yeah. tell you juni likes fishing in every game i never fish like oh. i want the game to have fishing for some reason um, and I'll give it to Final Fantasy 14. Any Final Fantasy players out there? Final Fantasy 14 has really boring fishing, but they have like fishing raids. They have ocean fishing. This it, is what Merrick is speaking of. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a fishing raid. <laughs> Basically, everyone gets together and goes out on a big boat in the deep ocean, and then like has to come like combine their efforts to fish a certain amount to get to like some crazy bonus thing and then everyone benefits from it it's it's true, actually yeah. kind of cool but as far as like am i going to stop what i'm doing and go and fish because i want to because it's fun this is the only mmo that has caused me to do that i can see juni in final fantasy uh hearing about the fishing raid and like putting on her fisher woman hat and being like yes. i, was I mean that's this. exactly what happened right <laughs> we, we've made is. we've actually made events social events in the discord for ocean fishing in final mm -hmm. fantasy so and you're not far off i mean <laughs> yep. speaking going from fishing to its like logical extension skiffs are also really awesome right like me and phoenix were talking about this uh last night Tra traversing water on on a skiff is the most enjoyable way. It may, it may not be the fastest. It no, may, but it feels good, right? It feels so good. It yep. feels so good. There's something about being in the water and feeling mm -hmm. that inertia and how the boat moves. That's what it, it is. It, it's perfect inertia. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. It. Even even as a passenger, most of the time I was just sitting there as a passenger. It feels so good compared to uh, a skimmer. A skimmer just feels like you're just I don't know. It feels wrong in a way, right? You're just kind of like well, it, it has its own water. inertia too. That it's unique. Mm -hmm. Um. But you're it right. Like, I don't think I would have thought like to complain about it until the skiff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the skiff is just done so well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I loved the skimmer. I loved the skimmer. But once you once you get into I a skiff, my skimmer. My you're skimmer like... My skiff is great. <laughs> my God. <laughs> <laughs> once you get into the skiff, it is, it is uh, amazing. Um, it's just... It's such an amazing... You could just even chill there and just relax in the water. And it's just an amazing feeling. And yes, Phoenix is right. Uh, there's some weird... Uh, physics with the skiff that uh, what? I guess yeah so we were traversing to a new story point in the skiff and I was a passenger and you need to we... lose a few pounds bro did you you, no, you no, sat no, no. on the wrong side of the boat and yes, flipped but... it over that's Wait, what you she's can saying actually flip a boat over <laughs> in so we, Guild Wars 2? We had, well, there was three people in the boat. It was myself, Phoenix, and an NPC. And we were taking that NPC to a quest. Uh -huh. I got out first, and the boat weight was then distributed all on one side, apparently. No, no, that's, no. That's no, the no, way that's they were sitting. I, it can't be, but that's the way they were sitting. <laughs> they were all sitting on one side, and I was sitting on the other. And as soon as I got out, the boat tipped that side and rolled <laughs> over. Is this written into the code for this? I would, like, I would love so. it to I, be. I would I, love it to be. I don't think so. I think it was just a coincidence that it happened <laughs> to tip the direction that they were sitting on. But it was insane. <laughs> oh, and here's the proof in the pudding, though. When I got back in the boat, because I was man I managed to get back in the boat, it tipped back straight up. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I wish we'll, I had recorded we'll do it. some science we, yeah, testing some science with that later. But we we really should like give Arena the credit that they deserve for 
I, I think it still goes into the joy of movement, right? Mm-hmm. Like yes. the ability to, to captain your boat mm-hmm. and have that be an incredibly satisfying and fun experience, even without being fast. This, you know what? The same is true of the turtles. Do you guys remember writing the turtle? I, I know not all of you have gotten it in game, but when it was in beta, I was shocked. That was another thing. I, I fully admit. I was like, turtle mount, this really looks silly. It was so much fun. It was mm-hmm. fun to ride. It was fun to drive. And I think whoever they got over there working on these systems, it, mm-hmm. it's like they knock it out of the park, man. How many other games do you go to and you want to just strangle somebody? Like, why is the movement so awkward? Yeah. Because Final Fantasy, Elder Scrolls, the other like two of the other really big games out there, right? Like the mm-hmm. the, the movement engine yes. is terrible. terrible. You cannot <laughs> change your direction while you jump. And now that's not realistic. You can't do that. <laughs> Real life, life sucks too. I want to be able to change <laughs> my <sucks>. trajectory <laughs> mid jump yes. in real life. Okay. <laughs> Who do I complain to? <laughs> I think we can all agree if you could do that in real life, it'd be amazing. It would be amazing. <laughs> and yes. The fact that you can do that in Guild Wars 2 is one of the things that makes Guild Wars 2 movement so awesome. It's what yes. makes their jumping puzzles so successful, right? Yeah. Is that is that ability to, to move midair while you're to change the trajectory of your jump. And I don't think any other MO does that. I haven't seen not, one. Not that, one that, that I know that. of. No. In um, fact, what, it, what it's doing is it's hearkening back. Like somebody was genius. Just... Somebody thought back, like, what makes. Mario platformers fun. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. as far back ago as super Mario for Nintendo, like that is an important element about it. And I took... need to be able to affect my trajectory mid jump. Now the amount that you are able to affect it is variable. Mm-hmm. Mario was pretty heavy, right? Like you could yeah. only do it like so much. Uh, but Guild Wars 2, yeah, double jumps when <laughs> yeah, double jumps would yeah, be nice. Double, yeah, double jumps uh, would be <laughs> that was a huge shock actually when they added that in World of Warcraft. There is a single actually, class. You can kind of do, do it that. now though. You can kind of double jump with the mastery. I won't say mean... anything else, but oh with the J with the Jade Bot Mastery, you can kind of double jump now. You mean it, the, oh. the little elevation thing for the Jade Bot? Yeah, you need to, obviously I to mean... be gliding to do it, but theoretically if you could get your glider out you could also because you know how when you jump you can glide briefly if the if, elevation if there's goes, even a tiny elevation tiny or bit, a tiny it, gap exactly even a tiny gap of the same elevation you could still get the glider out so you're right you exactly. probably could double jump now <laughs> but i mean the movement is fantastic and they they took the they took the lessons from platformers perfectly they they knew exactly what made them successful you know one of the key um i love uh, i don't watch enough of them but i love like video game documentaries there's not enough of them but i watched one on mario and the one of the things that made super mario so successful um was when they were play testing it people actually hated it they, they actually hated playing it they thought it was terrible mm. and they kept coming back to uh this the you know people saying that when they are moving from platform to platform uh, it felt like they were being cheated out of success because they, it was tough to find the spot where they could and couldn't land. So what they did was they added a small invisible part to the end of every platform. Everywhere in Mario um, a has lip, this, like an invisible this lip. lip. Yes. Guild Wars 2 has that as well. I'm sure you've noticed that oh, as yeah. you do jumping puzzles. Absolutely. It, it 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 changed Super Mario. It made it. It's one of the key things that made it successful. One of the key things that made it people enjoy it while they were playtesting it. And obviously, once the game was out. And I think if Guild Wars Two didn't have that, they didn't take those lessons from platformers, yeah. like being able to move when you jump. We would hate jumping puzzle if you couldn't change your trajectory when you could jump. If every time you were off by a tiny bit, landing at the platform and you fell and died, you know, had to restart, you would hate it. Um, and you they know what? I would never have thought awesome. of this. And you're so right. <laughs> Like if you if you walk off the edge of something, I'm actually in Guild Wars two right now. Uh, you can you can yes. you can see it. Yes, you can. That's, see it. that's how you end up standing on yep. nothing on yep. the edge of a ledge. Yep. And it's amazing that they they took those lessons and implemented them not not only so successfully, but you know it, it, we talked about this before. Ninety percent of you know eighty to ninety percent of the problems we see in an MMO. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I feel like it's eighty ninety percent are things that have already been solved before. Yep. MMOs, games in general, but MMOs need to, especially MMOs, need to take the lessons to build if, off one another. Yes, and yep. one another and other games, you know, and other sure, successful, absolutely. you know, franchises to to take these successful lessons build off. You don't have to reinvent the wheel just because you want to be a new game, right? You can take the successful stuff, implement them in your game, and the stuff that hasn't been done before, that's the stuff that you should really be trying to invent on. And cause that's, what's going to make your game innovative, not trying yep. to, you're not going to be innovative for getting rid of 
uh, ledges on platforms, you know, in a jumping puzzle. You're going to be annoying and people aren't going to like you. <laughs> yeah. Re reinventing the wheel for no reason is a terrible idea. Um, yep. Like in the evolution of the genre of MMO, I watched it uh, be a thing, right? So j the genre was brand new. They were kind of stealing from like D&D. &D. There was really nothing to steal from. Yeah. Um, and then World of Warcraft came out and set a standard, right? And then there was this weird era uh, and it still happens to this day. It was much worse back then where games were just trying to be different from WoW for the sake of being different. And they were coming out with systems that WoW was doing better and they were coming out with worse systems just for the sake of being be mm -hmm. uh, different and not better. And I, I've ever, ever real problem with that. Like this is a genre that is interconnected. Like the audience is interconnected. The MMO genre player base goes from game to game. Uh, and we know that that's true now, right? You burnout is a real thing. I don't know burnout. if you guys remember when you when you first discovered burnout. It was a fascinating thing, especially when the genre was so new that everyone was discovering burnout. There was those dramatic, like everyone was like, "Oh God, yeah, you know, you guys know what it's like to burn out on a game. Oh, you yeah. can barely look at it. Mm -hmm. It churns your stomach. You're like, ugh, I don't, I don't even want to hear the name of that game. Mm -hmm. This, and then you, you're like, back then people were like, I'm quitting forever. And I'm giving away all my stuff and I'm, and I'm deleting my account. I mean, people used to be so dramatic, but then we, we all learned as a community <laughs> that that's how burnout works, that it's cyclical, right? It's a cycle. And eventually you're going to come back and wish like all of a sudden that burnout is gone and you want to come back and check out your old game. And then you're like, oh, I gave away all my stuff. Um, and so like the, the genre has a similar player base and they've a lot of similar systems. So if you're not going to improve you know, like Cryptic said, put the effort towards improving something that needs improving, not reinventing a wheel that doesn't need to be reinvented. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I was talking about with Guild Wars 2 earlier being really good at is the shared group experience that other people around you are a really good thing. I think that's something that's, that this game has stood out to do, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I'll combine a couple of points. We were talking about seeing other people being nothing but a good thing and the ability to complete the actual story together with other people. Those two things are really solid. Um, somebody had mentioned, uh, oh, Rule Stormer said, this expansion adds so many social group experiences. The skiff, fishing, the two-player mount, um, all of these things are true. I think that that uh, ArenaNet should... I think if if I could if I could say that they should fix anything immediately, it would be this this uh, this thing where people are very separated in the expansion. Because I think bringing people together is what makes Guild Wars Two an incredibly good game, and we've got to sort of focus on that. If anybody does find out what the deal with that is, I would love to know the actual reason. Uh, what? Why the maps are empty? Or? Yeah, like yeah. if there's because they mean, said I, it's I, fixed, right? But I I'm still not seeing it, so I'm just not sure. I'll link Where you the post. I'll link you the post. But I, I actually went to the forum and read the post. And it really does sound like she says it's fixed, but the way that she words it makes it sound like I, I wish I I wish I could bring it up now and read it directly, but I'd have to dig through things. But the way that she words it makes it sound like um they made some changes behind the scenes to improve the situation, but this was the this is the outcome that they had intended, and they were only tweaking it to try to bring it closer to what the players expected. Mm -hmm. But you know, closer. I mean, I think that's why we've seen a slow increase in population. It's not that more people are playing. It's that they are slowly turning the dial back to what we expected it to be. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, that to me, again, speaks to, I know it's tough to test server load. It's tough to play test that, but you know, companies have the ability to do it. It's not impossible. You can create a scenario and test and load test. That's what load testing is. Yep. Um, and they, to, for the dial to have been so much to one direction and not closer to you know where it should have been mm -hmm. speaks to the fact that this needed a little more time um, for all the reasons we mentioned you know but I think one of the, the two biggest for me is a we needed we, this was a bad time to release I mean you know there's 20 other games out right now mm -hmm. <laughs> some of them MMOs for crying out loud when is yeah. an MMO re we had an MMO uh, an MMO release. When does that happen? They picked the they they decided to release yep. their expansion when another MMO was releasing, like <laughs> and, and a big one, and like a big huge one. record breaking Steam yep. user concurrent user kind mm -hmm. of level of MMO, and yep. and we saw this coming, right? Like the game was already successful. This is something yep. that was like this. We're talking about Lost Ark, by the way. Yes, Lost and Ark. Lost Ark had a very big passionate following leading mm -hmm. up to this. It's been out since 2019 i think in korea and russia 
Uh, but we saw this coming, and and it, and it's yes. huge. It's true. We don't get big new releases of MMOs very often, and literally within a few weeks of it being released was this expansion. Yeah. So it's rough. So yeah, there are multiple reasons for them to move it ahead. Um, but I mean, I think despite those negatives, those missteps, we should say, you know, lack of advertising, stuff like that. I I I'm still calling this expansion a success. I'm calling this expansion a success for the players. I don't know mm. if it's even success for Arena Net yet. So I, I think, maybe for the players that are already there, yeah. Like I think the player base, the people that are currently playing it, this is this is an, a success so far. We'll get to why, when it may not become a success. Maybe at the end of this podcast, there's another topic I want to talk about. No, but <laughs> um, I I think right now it's too early to call it a success for ArenaNet. I mean, we'll never know the real numbers behind the scenes, but based off of the things that they do going forward from here, um, we'll know you know whether the writing's on the wall and you know I mean I, I think. Because this expansion had all the potential to be a financial success, um, it would only have been their own doing, which is which is you know poetic. I'm not I'm not trying to smile about it because I love ArenaNet and I love Guild Wars 2, but it, you have to admit it is poetic that they actually release a good successful expansion. I don't want to say actually like it's the first time the other ones have been successful as well, but they they release one that we're all pretty much everybody is saying positive things about, yep. and Shockingly. it will still been a failure from a company from a business perspective mm. because of their own missteps that is like quintessential arena net at this point the, i mean the, the missteps being timing and marketing yes. timing right? and marketing yep right so we we know that they're not so great at that um yep. i i know that this time they really tried to be a little bit more transparent leading up to this we sort of knew that it was coming they were sharing more than they normally do um, I think they were trying to drum up hype, but again, like I, th I think cryptic sort of nailed it there. There's two different criteria for how we decide the level of success for this expansion. The people that are already there, they're already hooked, right? The people that are mm -hmm. active players of guild wars two or knew that they come back every time, even if they're not active, the player base that comes back every time there's a new, uh, living world story. Right. Yep. Every time there's a new raid, every time there's a new strike or new content, they'll come back for a little bit and then they don't again. These are active players in the mm -hmm. way that Guild Wars 2 uh, defines active. Right. They'll come back and they'll play when there's something new. Uh, in, in terms of that, I would say that it is a 10 out of 10 universally successful expansion. Again, I mentioned it earlier. I know a lot of people that have said a lot of negative things about Guild Wars 2 for the last four years, and I have not heard a single person say, I hate this expansion, I'm totally disappointed, I'm quitting this game. I've yeah. not heard it. And, I, and, I, and this is with a lot of people that I think would have loved to be able to say it. You know, there's just those people out there that just, yeah. you know, they would have been excited to talk a bunch of crap. But I, I think that everyone who plays this game loves this expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of people being toured to different games, and the other side of the coin is, are you able to get people who have quit this game to come back? And are you able to get players who never played this game to come try it? And that is an entirely different thing. And, you know, for those of you who are out there every day streaming this game or just mm -hmm. playing, like, are you seeing a huge influx of new players? My, my guess, and you're in cryptics, right? They'll never release numbers, right? Nobody, nobody does that. No gaming companies like to do that. But I really don't think it has nope. nailed that. I think that that's probably a, a, a big miss. And we've talked about, you know, I guess to segue into our next topic, we've talked about missed opportunities in the past as far as trying to, um, you know, monetize on what the game currently does and things that they can do in the future. Um, and, you know... I don't think we see some of that here. We're going to get skins for fishing, for skiffs, uh, for jade bots. Um, so we are going to get new skins. Or that is going to be what I think pr pr provides them the most revenue going forward. Okay. Um, as it has in the past. Uh, How do you feel about that? Oh, I'm fine with it. This is Guild Wars 2. I've never had a problem with the monetization. I just got into a discussion with somebody about this the other day um, because they can see that it's sort of a build up to that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the skiff and the, in fact, somebody said specifically when you press H, you can see the list of things mm -hmm. uh, it, under your hero panel. And now mm -hmm. there's several more things. And so like to them, that was a take that there's going to be a ton of new stuff that they're going to be sort of money grabbing in the gem store. And uh, I definitely have feelings about that, but I'm curious about how other people feel about that. Are you, I'm are people upset about the concept of skiff skins and uh, 
jade bot no, skins. I'm I love that there's skip skins. I, I, I mean, that's like, I, I love that stuff. Why not? I mean, it doesn't really affect the gameplay. And if somebody wants to add something and customize their character, customize their boat, I mean, that just is all positive. However, Flying Triangle mentioned something that has been annoying me in the game that I forgot about was the fact that in all the cutscenes, that little black lion icon is the oh, only yeah. thing that is sitting there. Why you need a link to the gem store during a cutscene, I do not know. Yeah, it's because they changed silly. the way on work so it's a whole nother they, again play test come on guys play test this yeah. <laughs> um, well, these are things that'll probably be changed <laughs> speaking of which my, my ultra wide uh, brother Merrick uh, have, when the screen fades uh, to white like let's say because you know they changed the way leaving an instance works now right mm -hmm. so if you're getting close to the edge of an instance it will fade to white and teleport you back instead of killing you or resetting or you know whatever oh, yeah. different things they do before you backwards. Yeah. when that happens do you get a white bar in the middle of your screen while the, while the fade is happening? Like, it, I know it fades to white completely, and then you're fine when you get back in there. But as soon as the fade starts, I get a giant white bar in the middle of my screen. I don't and think And nobody I've else has said that, that has happened to them. Are you, are you rocking the DX11? No, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I am. I'm DX, okay. I'm DX9, but I'm using DX9 to DX12 conversion mod, which is amazing, by the way. Yeah, I mm. never got that to work the way that I wanted to. And mm. I've been having an issue for a long time. Judy can tell you, um, there's a reason why, because I played Guild Wars 2 so much, there's a reason why we ended up working with a, a separate PC for a dedicated streaming PC. And it's because mm. Guild Wars 2 takes up, for me, 90 to 97% of my gpu mm. it is insane right like th that should not be the case and i've and so to try to fit Streamlabs on there which also runs on partially your gpu it mm. ends up being like an absolute monster but i just recently swapped to the dx11 beta thing mm. and it dropped down to like 27 to 32 percent gpu i've never mm. had any lag ever since i zoned super fast uh and i have not been kicked i haven't had any crashes or anything so i don't know if you if, if for those of you out there if you have not if you've been having issues and you have not tried the dx11 for a while <laughs> i encourage you to try it again i'm gonna have to give it a shot i'm definitely gonna have to give it a shot um i wanted to read what sleepy pandy said hi sleepy pandy uh talking about new players coming to guild wars 2 though in comparison to most other mmos i feel like guild wars 2 is the most new player friendly personal opinion of course well it is a personal opinion and it is one that i absolutely share with you i think that guild wars 2 is the single most new player friendly game that i've ever come across in the mmo genre this game's been out for 10 years, right? Almost 10 years. There's all this new content, the new expansion. And yet, every time I ever have somebody drop by my stream, it's like, I'm thinking about trying this game. I know that I'm very sensitive to the feeling of like, I'm behind. I won't be able to catch up. How do I play with my friends who've been playing for a long time? How impossible is it to raid? How arduous and unpleasant is the leveling experience? Like all of these things, Guild Wars 2 has magically sort of avoided. Right, like leveling from one to eighty, I think leveling in this game is probably the single most fun leveling experience I've ever had in an MMO. I think Juni talked about like the the joy of exploration, like exploration being rewarded. The zones are cool and interesting. If you see a cave and you're like, "Hey, I want to go back there," I don't have a quest to go back there, but I just kind of want to. Uh, the chances are something awesome is going to be back there. Like that's not true in other games. The story is streamlined. There's not a lot of monotony. There's not overly large amounts of reading without voice acting um once you get up to max level the gear treadmill doesn't exist if you wanted to make a character today uh, in fact my my good friend virus in there by the way the doctor underscore virus there he started playing guild wars 2 very recently and he wanted to raid he met some of us in the stream he wanted to raid he basically leveled in a couple of days got some exotic gear and walked right into raids with us and it's been raiding ever since if you want to skip things you can you can go back and do them later everything is account wide uh so you don't even have to worry about like alts versus main character investment and all that stuff like i completely agree with you and for a new expansion like cantha or eod to come out uh you know what my hope would be is that the flashing new stuff catches somebody and says hey come and give this a shot and then even though they may be off of it because i think guild wars 2 does have a pretty linear story much in the way that final fantasy does where you know in order to really do cantha you kind of gotta do the entire game's worth of story leading up to it right mm -hmm. but while you're doing that you could do that at your own pace 
and still raid with your buddies every Saturday. That is such an important point because we have come across this. We've been playing so many different MMOs lately and Guild Wars 2 is the only one that doesn't cause this problem. Final Fantasy 14, you have to get through the MSQ in order to raid with your friends. Which is no or, small task. No small task at all. It's the, basically the entire game. Or you have to do a, a skip. You can buy a skip, but then you don't get to experience that content in the same way again. Yeah. Um, same with even like Lost Ark. You know, there's endgame content, but you have to get through everything to get there. Guild Wars 2, you know, Merrick and I are in uh, part three of the End of Dragon story right now. So we're about halfway through. But he was able to do strike missions today and yesterday with yep. our friends. And that's a huge deal. That lets you experience the story at your own pace. And it doesn't interfere with you getting to play the social side of the MMO or the end game content. So what that allows you to do is do the social element, right? Anything your friends are doing, you can go and do with them, right? The new strikes, mm -hmm. the raids, dungeons, whatever, meta events, you can do all that. You can do that with your friends whenever you want to do that. And then you can go back and continue your own progression at your own pace uh, through the story, right? It scales with you and everything. Uh, so in my opinion... There's very few games out there that can even compete. Now, I, I should say what Praise QT said there says that it's irrelevant if ArenaNet does nothing to bring new players in. I agree it's the best, but doesn't matter much if no one knows that. And that is true, right? We should get praise where it's deserved and criticism where it's deserved too. Unfortunately, streaming Guild Wars 2, I used to have this happen all the time. Someone would come in and be like, hey, what game is this? I'm like, it's Guild Wars 2. They're like, what? I thought that game was dead. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean it's dead? And like, we just got a new expansion announced. It's a really exciting time. Like all of this stuff. Like there's so many yeah. uh, moments where you just, you just kind of want to shake arena and be like, guys, you've got one of the, or bet or the best MMO that has ever been made. And I feel like it's a, like it's a total diamond in the rough, but it's a complete secret out there. And I have to like drag my friends kicking and screaming to try it. Almost never. Does it happen that if I get someone to download the game and play it, I think it's only happened once in all the years that I played this game that, that the friend that I got to try it was like, ah, you know what? I really don't like it. I don't like the combat system. Um, and that's because that person is a much less action oriented com combat gamer, somebody that's not into modern gaming, someone that's back from the days of like EverQuest. I want to stand still and push a couple buttons. Um, so I, I wasn't surprised. But in general, if you can get people to come and play this, they love it. But how to get people out there to look at it, you know? It's a tough one. Advertising where it's all at. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, Arena, it's always been bad at that. And I mean, we'll see. We'll see, you know. I'll, I'll, we, there's nothing really we can do about it unless they decide to hire Merrick TV as their PR person. So. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I accept the position. Thank you very much, ArenaNet. I, I will say, I, I would like to go back to what uh, Diamond and Phoenix were talking about, about the skins. I mean, I, I, I think most people are fine with the skins in Guild Wars 2. Um, like Diamond was saying, though, they just need to, as long as they provide a, a, an alternative in-game. You know, we need more free alternatives in-game for good skins. Um, uh, you know, I would, I would definitely, I, I don't know what, I'm sure there are skins behind achievements for some of these things like skiff and fishing. I hope so. And if there's not, I feel like that's, that's where the that's issue is. That's fascinating to me that you said, I'm sure there is, because I, I don't know so. what precedent it is that you're mm -hmm. reaching for that makes you think that that's true. Because, when has well, that ever been the case? It's <laughs> never been true. <laughs> okay. But think of all the special, whenever specialization comes out, right? We get the, uh, an armor skin, a and weapon the skin, specialization and, then the, weapon. Yeah. and then a collection specialization weapon skin. Yeah. So that you've got, those are three skins per specialization. I mean, what we got, we have nine classes, I think. I hope I'm right with that. Um, we do. Yep. And then, you know, so three times nine is a lot of things. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 20, but in terms of yeah, but we've never lighter had... skins, mount skins, anything yes, like true. that in the, uh, in, in fact, it, it is such the rarity when we see something even under like the novelty section, yeah. right? Like we get very excited when there's a chair out there. But maybe uh, just not achievements. Like there are things that, uh, like there, there are things that vendors will sell you. Um, like think of like the, you know, like the Choya tonics and stuff like that, right? Like. Yeah. There are novelties that you can get the, the doom chair and you know things like that, right? Like I don't know. I I my I think my argument is that it exists in the game that there are free alternatives for pretty much like if you want uh, uh, the thing of personas in um uh um yeah, so? uh, Elder Scrolls, yeah. Personalities. Yeah, so, 
Yeah, personalities. Yeah. Um, you know, you know if you want one those. of those, can you get one free? Oh yeah, yeah. You there's okay. there's several in the game that come from in-game accomplishment. In fact, two of the flashiest, coolest ones come from some of the hardest raid content mm. of its time. Okay. So well, that's what I love. In fact, if we're gonna even have this discussion, I feel like we gotta ask what the best version of this sort of like freebie or this cash store sort of thing is. And it's gotta be ESO, right? Because they do sell all that kind of stuff, everything like that, skins and vanity items and all that kind of stuff but then there is also a certain amount that you're going to get from from actual in-game rates oh so, elder scrolls online does it fantastically except entire, for the rng stuff though well the rng stuff is a little annoying there's a little bit of that yeah yeah but it's just a couple of skins i feel like their model is so good though like they make you want to buy the subscription and then they give you their cash shop currency as part of your subscription. So it's mm. kind of like having the lifetime Star Trek online membership. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Well, but yeah. that, that takes a long time to pay off. So let me let me guys let me give you like a framework for how this works. In Guild Wars 2, Guild Wars 2 is free, right? But uh every time there's a new expansion or whatever, you might have to buy it. In between, as long as you're actively playing, you get the Living World story chapter. So they make the vast lion's share of their money from you know, vanity and convenience items that come from the gem store. Mm -hmm. In ESO, you do have to buy the game as a pay to own kind of game, but there is a subscription in the game. What it effectively means is, is that there is a never ending trial. So you can always go back and play the game just like in Guild Wars 2. You know, like if you ever want to go back and play WoW, you got to be like, eh, how much do I know I want to play this? I got to pay $15 to even look at the game and see if I hate it. Mm -hmm. In Guild Wars 2, you're like, yeah, it's been a while, right? Let's go check it out. Or there's a new Living World Story chapter. I'll just hop in and see if I even like this game. Uh, that's a really good thing. ESO allows you to do that same thing. And they mm -hmm. make a lot of money from their gem store, the same kind of like convenience and um, a utility kind of thing. But there is a subscription fee that you can pay instead. And if you do that, it's incredibly incentivized. It unlocks every DLC that has ever come out for the game all at once for the month that you are subscribed. And you also uh, get like an unlimited crafting bag. So like it's a store, it's like a material storage in Guild Wars 2, except it's unlimited. All these crazy things that make it so that if you're actively playing the game, you really need to, to get that sub. But here's the great thing. It's like $15 a month, like every other subscription thing. But on top of all the other perks, you get exactly $15 worth of gems when you subscribe. Mm. I mean, like that's hard to beat, right? Like, I think if I were to design a system, I would design it like that. And because uh, I, I have no problem giving money to ArenaNet. I want them, I want, you know, I want, I'm just to give my perspective on this. I'm not mad about the skiff or the Jade bot thing. I love that stuff. Yeah, Like, give me the opportunity to customize my character more. I will give you more gems, you know? Like, mm -hmm. let's go. I like this game. I, you deserve it. <laughs> you know. In fact, I'm often, I'm often complaining that there's not enough stuff in the gem store for those of us who would like to support more. And speaking of not enough stuff in the gem store, what what is the, what is something that this expansion uh, could have had potentially, um, but didn't for you? Like, what's missing? What What's something that you really want to say? And I think we all know what the answer is going to be. <laughs> uh, if you if you would have asked me two days ago, I would have said raids, but um, I, I don't think that's the direction you're going in. Mm. I mean, raids you're talking is fine. about player housing. <laughs> no, raids is a perfectly acceptable answer. That'd probably be my number two answer. Oh, okay, um, okay. Yeah, flying <laughs> triangle with the housing. There it there is, we go, man. Yeah. Player housing. Yeah. Can I can I just get like a? I mean, I there's 78 people in the chat. I know they're not all awake. I think we have a lot of sleepy EUs, but for those of you guys in chat, can I get like an X in chat if you would like player housing? If they announce today, hey guys, we are adding player housing to this game, would that be something you would be very excited about? Or or would you be, I didn't give you an option to hate it. I guess I guess type Y if you would be bummed. And yeah, I'm, I'll... I'm making it Y because why? Why would you be bummed? <laughs> A library has been a common ask. I think we had a big discussion about Ooh. this in the Discord. Remember, we were just Ooh. talking about. Uh, um, I don't know if you were. I don't know if you were there, Merrick, but I, I think me and Saul and some other people were talking about having a library and a. A library your... would help so much. I have so Wait, many. Did Cryptic books. just say library? <laughs> 
possible. We kept like the library. I, the, I have wanted a <laughs> library as well oh, that's, that's because it. I just have books and books and books saved on my other on various characters, and I would love to just be able to put them in one location. That would be mm. so nice. And yeah, like like Skyrim, dude. Didn't everyone build a library in Skyrim in their house? Mm -hmm. Everybody did that, didn't they? It was just me. I was obsessed. <laughs> I collected every book known to man. Oh, in Skyrim? Absolutely. Yes. I, I remember just piling them up and then trying to get them onto shelves and everything. Yeah, and oh. it was hard. Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> you know, the um, uh, all the all there's all this lore in Guild Wars 2 that's scattered around as books and papers and stuff. And you just end up having yep. to delete it because it fills up your bank. If it went into a library, that would be awesome. And then what they can do is retroactively, anyone that has completed the achievement for any of those lore things, so those lore collection stuff, they just get all that put in there. Yeah. So you don't have to go back and try to find you know, these all these books again just so you can put them in your library because you deleted them. They could just go straight in there, problem solved. Uh, and that would incentivize, incentivize additional lore yes. books to be <laughs> oh, written, true. True. right? Because yeah. all that stuff is great. There's people out there that love that. I talk about this often. Ev like I, I say constantly, right, that there's this giant pool of MMO gamers who we sort of float from one game to another. And it's true, right? But there are differences in communities. There are some people who play Guild Wars 2 who are never going to want to go and play WoW. And there's some WoW players who are never going to want to go and play Guild Wars 2, right? They, they, they can represent different elements. And I've said it before. I'll say it a hundred times. World of Warcraft players, by and large, would not care about player housing. Mm -hmm. That is just not what that game is about. Uh, in Guild Wars 2, I think it is the absolute perfect community for player Absolutely. housing. I think people love that kind of stuff. They even get into the guild hall decorating, which is a shadow of what you know it could be for individual player housing. Mm -hmm. Even the um, that place in POF that's like kind of like a little zone hub that you sort of build up, right? Um, I forgot what I forgot what it's even called. Um, oh yeah, what is Lights that? Refuge or some I don't know. I forgot what it is. But the um, but to actually have individual housing where they could sell stuff on the gem store. You could slay Zaitan and get a giant Zaitan mounted head and stick it on your wall, right? At, mm -hmm. at home over your, over your dinner table, finish your legendary <laughs> weapon, right? And then mount that thing and, on mm -hmm. the wall looking awesome. Like these are the players that would enjoy this. This mm -hmm. is a game where fashion and peripheral achievement, right? Is really important because there isn't like, uh, a, a vertical ladder of achievement in this game, mm -hmm. right? Like everybody's sort of at the same level. So you kind of come up with your own goals. I think this game is ripe for that. Yeah, this game could have library. It could have an armory. It could have, you know, all for cooking for all your cooking stuff. And you could have, you could have every station crafting station there in your house. And then somebody else mentioned, I don't know if it was Saul or Ash. We haven't a big discussion about this. What about a menagerie, right? Where you could keep all your mounts. Minis and, and mounts. Minis and mounts, exactly. How nice yes. would that be? Yeah. What if you could go collect uh, animals in the world that are non-aggressive, right? Like the bunnies mm -hmm. everywhere you see? Wouldn't you like to collect some bunnies? Yes. Yeah, the most they do is let you collect the cats, right? In yeah. Guild Wars 2. But mm -hmm. Elder Scrolls And in your home on... instance, you can have the cat. What is it? Um, um, later, Lady yeah. Mysterio, Whiskington, or whatever. Well, you can have a bunch of cats that show up your, in your home yes, instance, but that's true. not really the, what you're talking about. Like with, The closest thing to that is in Elder Scrolls where you can put your mounts and your pets um, in yes. areas in your home. And even NPCs. Yeah, uh, they're In the gem store in ESO, you can buy mm -hmm. NPCs with big personalities that walk mm -hmm. around your house and say stuff. And, you know, it, I, I just think that they really nailed that sort of like role-playing peripheral experience in an MMO. Uh, Flying Dragon said, bunnies are evil. No bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> uh when was the last time you saw Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Yeah. Oof, uh, Got there fangs. It <laughs> uh but yeah, I think I think player housing would have been would have been really good. In fact, that's something they could add at any time. That's not like a missed opportunity. They could come out with that as like a pseudo expansion later, and I would buy it and everyone would buy it, and it would be a great idea. But let let's talk about raids. Let's talk about end game PvE. So let's first raids of all, don't, raids don't exist. I don't yeah, know. Let, first of all, let's talk about the expectation, right? That it was sort of dying, that uh, raids in general were being cut off. I think it's fair to say that the Guild Wars 2 community uh, labels Guild Wars 2 as being a game and ArenaNet as being a company that will come out with a new system and abandon an old one rather than maintain it or fix it. I'm, 
I, I think that's a nuanced discussion. I'm not saying that that's entirely true, but I think that it's fair to say that some of the long-term community would, would insist that that's the case. Would you mm-hmm. agree with that, Cryptic? Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, uh, I will probably, this was the point that I was going to get to that we'll, we'll, you know, either talk oh. about now or later yeah. mm-hmm. is that, no, no, I think it's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, and mine's a little more expanded is that like, uh, you know, ELD, we're seeing some, we're seeing at least success with players in ELD. We'll talk about, you know, business success is another thing. Uh, can they continue this momentum? Will they continue this momentum? Um, and, you know, not basically dropping rage, dropping fractals. Now strikes is the thing. You know, if I haven't done any strikes, I've heard good things. I've heard. Oh, you um, haven't done them? I have not done any. Oh, yet. bro, I would have dragged you through them. I did. Um, I did three out of four. Okay. Just right. for the podcast. What is your opinion? Um, okay. I love them. Love them. Absolutely was stunned at how much fun I had. Um, are they difficult? Uh, yes. And the CMs are not implemented yet. So I like, I went in with 10 Raiders, mm-hmm. like Raider Raiders, like, uh, like people, like people, you know, in fact, uh, Tiffy and me and like, uh, CAG and Pew and Manster, you know, like a lot of our friends that, uh, have, have a lot of experience rating. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not like the tip top, elite but we are all experienced raiders um Mm -hmm. and so like for us it was it was exciting uh not frustrating sort of very engaging in a way that only guild wars 2 can do but not as messy as some of like the fractal fights like i think i think fractals some of the really challenging hard end game fractals uh bring a level of difficulty that i i love right it's like a a level of personal expectation for you to perform your character really quickly to react a lot and but there's so much mess going on that i feel like the way that they've increased difficulty is kind of lazy sometimes just to make Mm -hmm. it really messy um i think raids are better at it um but are you not concerned with that with the strikes like i heard cc is a big thing about it do you think that that is actually a good way to increase difficulty or a bandage over the situation i I do i've been thinking a lot about this and we might disagree um rocky on na or eu we're on na um so I, I actually think that this is a really exciting thing. I, I know that there's some big changes. Change is always hard. Um, I think what they're trying to do with the with the boon management, mm-hmm. right? Being dropped down to like more things needing to provide boons, more five-person boon generating things, uh, more emphasis on CC. I think that they're trying to hybridize a lot more. I think they're going to force us to not ignore everything in the game and just take the purest form of DPS that you can take. I think they're going to require more builds to be hybrid. I think they're going to require more builds to make sacrifice, individual sacrifice to be able to accomplish CC and mechanics. And I think that that's going to suck for us who have been really hardcore in this for a long time, but I think it's going to make a healthier end game in the long run. Now I know that might be a hot take. You guys might not agree with me, but I think in the end, that is an exciting element. Mm. Uh, so that that's my take. That's my take. What yeah, about you? I mean, I, I I had to change my battery while you were saying that, so I got most you of it. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I agree. Um, I my my only concern is that once people get the CC bars figured out, and with more supports being added into these comps anyway, right? Like, yeah. like some comps I've seen have six supports in them. I don't yeah. think that's what's going to end up being the meta, but. Some comps have six supports. I I I am concerned that there will be more CC available and that people will be more used to it and will be more aware. Because you know, I, I'm well known for going through raids with you know not always CCing when I should. Right? You don't. Like, you, you don't say. You, yeah, Who you would just, say such a thing about you? Kirk? I mean, you're losing DPS. Right? You know, like <laughs> it's a I DPS gotta, loss. Yeah, it's a DPS loss. Right? I mean, it's the same reason I don't dodge. It's a DPS loss. Oh god. <laughs> Um, hey, stop but, setting your fire. Shut up. I'm talking to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> the age old. Uh, oh, man. No, but I mean, I think as like people, even people like me who are so concerned about DPS and doing the rotation right and, you know, being top of the, of the, the DPS meter are accepting that because, you know, when push came to shove, if we were failing the raid because we didn't have enough CC, I would bring CC, right? I would do the thing and, and get every, get it sorted. And if that is the requirement, just going into it, um, don't you think that 
it will just become a normal thing and then people will just be able to you know it it will the difficulty will just the band-aid will be have been ripped off right like oh we have more supports more cc more people are doing it goodbye we're back to square one almost okay okay i, I see where you're going i think that this is two separate things right it's like how like if we changed the end game requirement to be the same level of difficulty but requires something different a bigger a bigger sacrifice for the group to be more hybrid or more inclusive of utility like cc but the same level of difficulty that's a that's a separate argument for we want it to be harder and the way that we've chosen difficulty is through cc is that going to be enough um i i think you're right i think right now it's going to we're going to be going through some growing pains while we're waiting for people to get used to this i think we've already struggled with the, sh the small amount of cc required already in mm -hmm. modern raids nobody wants to bring it i think the single best thing that happened for guild wars 2 raids in the last year had nothing to do with arena net and was the fact that arc dps started reflecting cc damage <laughs> so like everyone could see how much damage somebody did to cc that was a really good change from a, from a raid leader's standpoint from a raid trainer's standpoint which i did a lot of that was wonderful because not only could i like call out the cryptics of the world uh who Dang. were not cc like look at look at his cc but it also made it so that i could contribute towards cc and and be proud of it Right, like, that's what DPS players want, right? We want to like flex our skill, yeah. have it reflected on a meter for myself and everyone else to see. And all of a sudden, the ability to do a ton of damage and provide CC became much more appealing. I I stopped playing Reaper every time I did Samurai and started pulling out my Shield Hollow Smith, um, and and liked that. Right, so like if that permeates end game in a way that that becomes the expectation, even if the difficulty stays exactly way, the way that it is right now, mm -hmm. I would still call it a success. I think like the additional variety, because you guys know how I feel about boons. I've said this before. I think Guild Wars 2's combat system and end game cooperative PVE environment is some of the best I've ever seen in any game ever. And yet it is almost ruined or at least has an absolute stranglehold on it based on boons and, and the boon uh contribution and even cc things like that they they sort of like define what is allowed to be brought and what isn't so we get to see varying degrees of variety and viability in raids based on those things so in this new meta where things are going to be more boons are provided by a lot of different people but they're only five man so there's going to be like i think there's going to be a more variety than we've ever seen um especially since there's a whole third new classes there's literally 33 percent more classes than there were before which is insane and amazing uh and and this increased variety and expectation of utility in the form of cc i think we're by the time the growing pains are done you know you guys can quote me on this later and i might be wrong but i'm gonna i'm gonna put it out there right now i think it's gonna lead to a healthier environment for raids than we've ever had i i can see that with the cc and like the combo fields and stuff like that um, I, I see, I want to agree with you with the, the boons. I, I really do. Um, I, mechanist as an example, mechanist exist. Mechanist gives yeah. every boon except, yeah. uh, quickness, quickness. Yeah. So isn't it just going to be bring two mechanist and then bring, uh, you know, uh, two quickness scrappers and call it a day. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and so when I say growing pains, I don't even just mean us. I think mm -hmm. I also mean arena net arena okay. net does things like this, right? Mm -hmm. Every time there's been a new something, uh, there's been some ridiculous balance decision, um, that is just ab absurd and eventually has to be like way dialed back. Right. Yeah. Like we, we saw it in every expansion. Um, and so I, I truly don't believe that mechanism is going to be left alone. I think it's probably going to get the hardest rework, uh, because having played it myself, I was, I was looking forward to mechanism more than any other class. Mm -hmm. And I think not only is it too strong, it's also too boring. Um, I don't actually find it that exciting to play and I don't find it to be in line in balance with what I believe they're trying to accomplish with end game. So, uh, again, I have no insider knowledge. I am not an ArenaNet employee or or affiliate, uh, but I believe that this is sort of going against what they are hoping to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably going to be changed. We'll see. We'll see. But you're right. As of right now, if that didn't change, I, it's defeated by that, right? It's too good. It's too yeah. good. Well, that kind of goes into what Sleepy Panda and Reckham Jones were talking about. Um, 
they were saying on the EU side, at least, that the looking for groups just already, even now in the game, what has been out for several days only, Four they days. just want uh, raid kill proof and like boon requirements and all this stuff like right from the get go. And that makes it really intimidating uh, and stressful for the majority of the player base. I so, heard it's the same on NA. I haven't seen it myself personally, but this is always not to interrupt you, Mary, but this has always been a problem for LFG. Specifically um, for EU yeah, though. Yeah. It's way yeah, worse. That's true. Yeah. Way worse. I mean, LFG and NA, they want uh, KP, right? Like, so they want you to ping what I consider. I can go on a rant about KP forever. They want you to ping something that is completely meaningless that most players consume, especially if they're in a guild, you want to consume it so they can build the things. Um, yeah. You know, it, if you save it, it just takes up space, meaningless space in your inventory. Uh, I can go on a rant about it forever. I think the way NA does it is even dumber than EU. Um, I don't like what EU does either. I think... The raid community is so small; it's dying. Yeah, it why should be. We, it should be inclusive, you know, right? It should be encouraging new people. <laughs> you know, yeah. like if if you, I'd like to do a podcast on on this. By oh the yeah, way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, because we did try. Like you know, back when we were doing a lot of Guild Wars two trainings like a year ago, like we really put in a lot of effort to try to make that more accessible to other people. But yeah, it's did. it's incredibly difficult because most groups out there are like super meta. 50 DKP minus. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what up, <I> Fiona? <laughs> um, oh, what's up, buddy, buddy? Yo, dude. He said, oh, no, the stash looks spectacular. Please keep. No, please. <laughs> we, could you put up like a poll stash. in chat to help people vote for me to shave this mustache? Judy, I think we need Wait, a poll. What? You know, Does Merrick shave the mustache or keep the mustache? I'm pretty sure that's up to his soul. I no, don't know I mean, where may, no point is right now. Maybe, but <laughs> I need I need the chat's help to help me convince him otherwise. So could you I put up a poll? I figured out why the stash doesn't match. It's not because it doesn't match your face. It's because it doesn't match your hair color. So you need to dye your stash. Oh, it. I mean, no, it's the same color it's, basically. Well, my facial right. hair is slightly darker than my hair. That's true. But I no, think but that's, that's, isn't the top of your hair like uh, looks like it was dyed or something? Brown. Yeah. Uh, is your hair just always that stunning? <laughs> it is always that stunning. Okay. <laughs> and my oh, mustache is just like okay. slightly, okay. slightly darker, bro. Maybe it's just the hue of the purple in your room that's making it look like it's. Why is my yeah. hair doing that? The hue of the purple in my room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, I, I, again, I think that we should do an entire podcast on like the raid scene and like yeah. getting into the raid scene. Because again, uh, for those of you guys who may not know me, I was a very, very active daily streamer in the raid scene in Guild Wars 2 up until relatively recently. My wife, Junie, had breast cancer this year and we sort of knocked the wind out of us and we stopped being around as much. We're trying to come back now, so it's very exciting. But back then we were doing it all the time and our big goal was to combat exactly that how inclusive or ex exclusive exclusionary raids were and i actually ended up making an account on eu and experienced the dichotomy like mm -hmm. i would say cryptic's right like we have our own goofy things over here we focus on kp uh eu focuses on li but i can tell you that every single raid I ever joined in EU demanded it of me mm -hmm. and no amount of talking or like titles or like, let me link you my KP.me, killproof.me, whatever. They wanted nothing to do with it. They had to have that. And I can't, I can't even tell you the last time somebody was super serious about me pinging KP in uh in i feel like it's becoming that way i, I, I this is a while ago but I, I listened to a tea time um with mighty teapot and uh um brazil and and one other person i oh, can't remember tea time. yeah yes tea time I, I but i can't remember the name of the guest that they had on but it was the guest who is actually because you know uh teapot is eu um he can play on either server but uh, mostly eu um it, this uh streamer it was a guest i wish i could remember name apologies if you're watching this um he was raiding in na you know like marginally experienced raider probably not the most experienced but it seemed you know just like he had marginal experience it seemed like he knew what he was doing um sure. and uh he was playing on an alt um and the raid the, the raid leader that he was joining the the groups he was joining they were refusing to let him join because he didn't have any kp mm -hmm. so I feel like it's becoming more that I mean I've been removed from the LFG scene for so long, so I can't say Who from my own experience. Who removed you? Why did you do that? 
<laughs> arena net removed. Oh man, <laughs> for too being toxic. too toxic. Too toxic. People were just so tired of you not seeing yeah, crypto. Yeah, they finally they yeah, had enough. It's they've had enough. They had enough. But I, um, I had the same thing, right? Like at the time when I went to EU, um, mm-hmm. that was at the height of like the you know our streams popularity. Yep. We had done a ton uh, in the raid scene. Most people in NA knew us. I had a lot of friends over on EU. I was going over there. I was doing the hard stuck thing. And I was, you know, like I would have friends be like, no, this is Merrick. Like he's an experienced raider. And they would be like, no, <laughs> like I was like even people vouching for me, like it didn't matter. And it was so uh, they were very strict about it in a way that I just don't see as much in NA. That there are differences between communities from across the pond. Um, and that is probably the most distinct which is oh, is the, the poll is up. All right, everyone uh, vote. No, right. only okay, one so vote. Okay, so I made the a mistake with up. the poll. Yeah. <laughs> I made a mistake all time. <laughs> Wait, should Merrick shave the mustache? And then I said <laughs> yes. Well, yes. <laughs> it's 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 double, yes. So yes it's or yes. Green <laughs> poll. It can only be yes. <laughs> Judy. Like, it might be like um, what is that called? Hold on. I'm gonna report this poll. <laughs> I'm redoing the poll. <laughs> oh, Rackham Jones just asked a very fascinating question. Do you think auto queue raid finder would help? So I should I should say for anybody watching this podcast now or in the future when we upload it to YouTube, um, that we're just, we're specifically talking about Guild Wars 2, which to date is probably the only modern game, the only modern MMO that does not offer a queuing system. Mm-hmm. Right. We don't talk about this very often, but man, is that like defining, mm-hmm. right? Like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, Elder Scrolls. It doesn't matter. Like you queue up for something and then it shoves you together. Mm-hmm. Um, that does not exist here. People have to seek it out. You sort of look for what the groups are advertising. You go in, they kick you. Do I think that that bypasses some problems? Yes. You want to know the truth? Uh, like LFR, Raid Finder in, uh, in World of Warcraft. The other problem, I think, and and I think that this really goes into that discussion, uh, Reckham, is that in Guild Wars 2, there is so much of a divide between the average player who just got to level 80 or even has been 80 for a long time, the average player who doesn't raid and then their experience going into their first raid. It, it is such a, a chasm to cross. Mm-hmm. I, I say it all the time, like Guild Wars 2's combat system is beautiful. It's amazing. But... 99% of this game, you could do whatever you want and, and it's going to work. In fact, one of the ways to determine that that's true is go ask uh, a bunch of players who don't raid like, hey, you got any good builds? And they'll be like, yeah, oh man, I got the best build ever. This is the bestest build in the world. And they yeah, will share the most that, ridiculous that thing. <laughs> like, it's just so goofy and yeah. ineffective. And they're so convinced that it works great because it works good for them. Um, but when you walk into a raid, that divide is very evident. So in World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy, there's like easy raids, medium raids, advanced raids, super hard raids. Like, like, and it sort of funnels you in with, with that experience. Mm-hmm. I think here we're taking the single most hardcore, sweaty, jaded, you know, like intense gamers uh, who have been raiding the same content for years and years And we're putting them in the same little box as somebody who's trying to raid for the first time ever. And there isn't a distinction. Uh, So I I think that like the whole infrastructure of raids needs to be sort of reworked just a little bit. Junie. Yeah. She ran upstairs. I don't know what she's, what Mm -hmm. she's done. Uh, I'm hoping she's getting some snacks because I'm hungry. Uh, But I think that the system should be reworked. I think that it should be more invested in the end game in terms of ramping difficulty, rewarding the end game content and in the infrastructure that allows people to find other players to get together. I would like to see a lot more investment on that. I I, I think that um, I agree. I mean, I don't think the LFR is that is I think it would actually be a detriment to the to the, this game in general um i, I think it's going to bring introducing it at this point is going to bring more negatives than positives i feel like and mm-hmm. we've seen a lot of those negatives in lost ark i mean apparently lfr there is a nightmare um is so it? Yeah, okay i haven't done that's, that yet. that's what i've i've heard I, I i was i was listening to a podcast and one guy was talking about his experience and apparently he couldn't complete a guardian raid because whenever he lfr'd for it because he didn't have a he, could, he didn't have a group to do it with whenever he lfr'd for it he uh, either he said 80% of the time he got people that could, didn't know what they were doing and he couldn't explain it to them no matter how hard he tried. 
Um, and then the other 20%, when he got a group that looked like it was actually going to do it, someone DC'd. And if you DC from instance content in Lost Ark, it, you cannot reinvite the person. They cannot rejoin. I mean, they can rejoin if they come back right away. But if they come back later, they can't rejoin. And it doesn't randomly put someone in there for you. So you okay. can't complete the content if you're short on people. <laughs> but those are other factors that don't need to be there, right? Yeah, So like, true. we could clean that up and have it be a better system. Um, for example, Rackham said something to the effect of you could queue your role. Um, and it could have a stat requirement. So a healer might have 900 healer power. Boon mm. could have duration stat be one thing. Um, that's true. At the very least, queuing specifically for roll could really solve a lot of things. Yeah, you true. could even like queue multiple things. I can tank DPS, alacrity, quickness. I mean, how nice would that be if that could actually be worked out? Because I I'll tell you, um, one of the biggest things, and this is actually a bigger issue in NA than it is in EU, right? We talk about this a lot. No one wants to lead raids in NA. Uh, people are just willing to tag up and raid in EU way more often than in NA. People will want to join a group, but they don't want to lead it. And I, that's why when I, whenever I stream raids and I lead the raid, I always speak out loud. Some of you guys who remember my, my raid streams, right? I do this every time. I'm like, let's talk about how we're building this group. Mm -hmm. What do we need? Uh, how do I know what subgroup to put which one in, right? Like this is harder in this game than it is in any other game. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of that boon stranglehold that I've been talking about, man. Like it really defines the end game. But when you're deciding, hey, I want to put together a raid for this, it, it, it requires a very advanced raider to actually understand how the boons are set up, how to put it together, what you need, uh, what to ask someone to play and then what subgroup to put them in. That's the hardest part of rating. It really is. <laughs> That's the last step. Yeah. So any, I mean, any way to streamline that would be good. Right? Yeah. I mean, it, it absolutely, I think that would be good. Um, I mean, we'll, you know, I, I think the role queue sounds like a better solution than just the straight up LFR. Um, but I mean, regardless of whether this is something, you know, that, you know, whether it's something that is good or not, because we don't actually have it in the game right now, and we may, we probably never will have it. Um, I, I think what this shows is that arena net has to do twice as much work to advertise end game content, right? Like end game content just is hidden away in it's almost hidden away in its current state. And arena net really needs to, if they're not going to have an LFR, which is does like half of your advertisement work for you, they mm -hmm. really need to push end game content as much as possible. There needs to be like a neon sign. that's like, go here for end game content. And that has never been here. Mm -hmm. um nothing about end game content rewards you with things that you can't get somewhere else mm -hmm. um and that's that includes story right it, it, that's what i talk about all the time i say it constantly and i think it really does define the experience of end game in this game versus other games so, like mm -hmm. if you want the best gear in the game do you have to raid no and that seems very normal to you as a guild wars 2 player but that is not normal for the genre uh in, in general you want the biggest baddest gear you want to mm -hmm. look the coolest you want to be the big, bad, you know, dragon slayer that impresses everyone in town? That's raiding. But it isn't in Guild Wars 2. And it's not story either. The completion of the expansion that we're doing right now, we're not about to fight, you know, the big, bad, uh, you know what? I can't say anything because Cryptic doesn't know the strike missions. I would I would have said something just now that I'm not going to wow. say. Ooh, um, spoiler over. Well, I'm just saying there's, <laughs> uh, for me, man. there's a little bit of a turn. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it is, well, Legendary Armor, but Legendary Armor can be gotten in any game mode. You can do Legendary Armor in World v. World. You can do it in PvP. You can do it in, in raids. And, you know, it doesn't necessitate you beating the big bad bosses. In fact, the hardest raids in the game are not included in this legendary armor completion. Mm -hmm. um, so and it's is... uh, not the cool versions. <laughs> well, you know. I, I, I'll say that this is also probably a topic for a larger discussion because I was I was listening to a podcast today about MMOs and they were talking about all these different problems all these different MMOs have. And to me, it really signifies that I mean, every MMO has pro every game has problems, but every MMO has problems. That's that's the way it's going to be. Um, and I think the important thing that should come out of a lot of these discussions and should hopefully get back to the devs that the player base should be pushing is the issues that are preventing the game from being successful long term. Like we mm -hmm. talked about more monetization in Guild Wars 2 so they can be more financially stable so ArenaNet can continue um, or better advertising. Content. Yeah, you know, advertise more content that comes along more quickly so the player base stays more invested, better advertising of the new content coming out. Um, those are the kind of issues that really need to hit the PR team's ears, really need to hit the dev team's ears so that 
you know, hopefully that can get trickle back up to leadership and those changes can be effect because that's really, you know, all these other things we're talking about, like, uh, you know, like we want more raids, right? Like, or, or, you know, th- you know, like uh, we want raids to be harder. We'll use that as an example, or, or we want, um, uh, you know, a different stat set or something like that. Uh, uh, those are all, or more balance. Those are all things that are important to the player base, but maybe not necessarily important to the long-term success of the game. Um, and issues that are important to the long-term success of the game are really the ones that need to be pushed, you know, outside of in these discussions, but more importantly, outside of these discussions. I've seen way too many, way, way too many posts on Reddit and on the forums that are such non-starter issues that, you know, like it worries me that devs will stop actually reading the forms. You know, they will stop mm. paying attention to these things. They will stop, you know, people sit there and they wonder, oh, I've got this serious issue. Why isn't a dev responding to me? You know, why am I not getting more interaction here? Maybe it's because all of these posts that are filling up the forms, they're just tired of of dealing with, you know, with, uh, uh, some issues that really just aren't, you know, aren't issues. Um, I'm not saying that things shouldn't be reported. Uh, I just... I want the community as a whole to kind of focus more on the ground, you know, like we talked about the servers being empty, like that is affecting people's perception of the game. That is affecting yep. people's per- perception of the success of this expansion mm-hmm. and therefore going to affect whether more people come in and play it. Um, and that is an issue that should be, why is that buried in the forms? Why is there only like two, I only saw like two posts about it. I had to search for the one that had Ruby's response on it. Like, you know, that should oh, be yeah. top front and center we need this we need this fixed it's for the for the health of the game for the long term health of the game i agree um with you and with eliandria time to shave merrick uh it looks like <laughs> the uh the poll has me winning juni oh my god oh seven my. people oh, oh no my. it ended <laughs> I, I mean, I guess we can take a screenshot of this and show it to no point and see if uh, we accept any of this. <laughs> what, what, how many nodes were there? Mustache, huh? The what? How many nodes were there? Four. Four. And oh. seven yeses. Mm. Yes. I was oh. one of the yeses. Oh, you don't count. So take what? that off. You can't vote in your own <laughs> poll. No. No, 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 no. I should get to. No, 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 no. no. Uh, so just to, just to wrap up end game, right? Just to ra- wrap up my take on the strikes when i went into this expansion i was very sad i was very very oh people people missed the 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 poll <laughs> okay put the poll back up um so the when i heard about what they were doing where they weren't going to be adding any raids right a lot of our uh our sort of like raid community immediately wrote the entire expansion off mm-hmm. a lot of people did they were like oh well our game mode is dead they've basically told us as much we're not going to get a raid at launch and then arena net said something to the effect of like we're kind of done with raids we're going to move towards this strike thing um in in the beginning strikes were supposed to be addressing what i was talking about before which is this large divide between someone who has been not raiding and then someone that wants to raid Mm -hmm. right it was supposed to be a ramp that got people used to 10-man content and then ramped them up into raiding and and I, I think in a way that was relatively successful. Uh, the intro strikes are very easy. They uh, they were very good money. They could be done every day. They were sort of more like fractals, except they were ten man. Um, and and so like uh, it was really digestible for people who were not real raiders. Um, now my concern was that raids were going to be dead. Uh, and I guess in the form of like, are we going to come out with a giant raid wing with four bosses? That's probably not going to happen anymore. Yeah. But the inclusion of these events, how they interact with the story, because they do, right? Yeah, they that, do. That, that's actually something really cool. We didn't see that in raids at all. Yeah, but I, we got, I know what the first strike is, so I, yeah. I've, I've heard and seen that. So I, I and do know you've how seen it the strikes from the story. prior to the expansion. Yes, true, correct. That's also they they also interact with the story. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. actually a really cool thing, right? They introduce you to the strike in the story in a very easy way, and mm-hmm. then they give you like a harder ten man version of that. And they've continued that. They've mm-hmm. continued that into. Um, into this expansion as well and it's really cool to me because i i think what i've what i've learned in the last two days is that i don't need it to be a raid wing come it, like if this means that they're gonna be coming out with uh new individual raid bosses from strikes which by the way i killed a raid boss and watched somebody drop a cool unique ascended skin just like a raid by the way i saw that happen today so that that's still there that element of raiding is still there Mm -hmm. that they're difficult 
fun, exciting 10 man content that has to do with the story going forward that they're going to release on a regular, reliable schedule in the same way that they do dropping random new fractals. You know, like to me, I think that it actually could serve as a boon to end game 10 man content. Like we just have to stop calling it raids. That might be the only uh, concession we have to make, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, uh, but I, but they were that. fun and challenging, and the CMs aren't out yet, man. Like I'm genuinely excited for what's mm. to come. Yeah, I mean I, that sounds awesome. I mean I'm excited as well. Like I said, I haven't done one yet, but um, you made me even more excited to actually start tackling them, bro. So. When this stream is over, let's go. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> That goes for anyone who would like to uh, join in in the stream. Feel I mean, free yeah, we to can join us. <laughs> uh, um, Maddox says you can't shave until you get the curl. To, yeah. <laughs> so what this is, is that everyone was bullying me to keep growing this until it turns into a full-fledged handlebar mustache. I'm supposed to be able to like twist it at the end. I <laughs> hate everything about this. But just so you guys know what they're, what they're trying to do. Um, Wait, I, now the, you don't leave the poll up long enough. <laughs> What? <laughs> I actually, I actually voted yes this time. I, I voted I yes this time. You. Thank yeah. you. Did you to shave yeah, it? I did. So all the votes were you guys? I yeah. guess so. so. <laughs> Jenny, did you vote no the last time? No, I voted yes last time. Oh, uh, uh, she's uh, against it. She's not neutral. Like <laughs> she's against it. Uh, I can't. I'm on to you, but I wish good luck, people. Yes. Oh. The, the okay. divide between the two is one of the saddest things. I wish we could freely swap back and forth. I really do. Yeah. Be nice. Um, one more thing I wanted to hit on before uh, maybe we do the, like the the wrap up segment or something. I, free mounts, right? Um, isn't that awesome that Arena there you can if you don't have Path of Fire, there's like three mounts oh, you can get. Yeah. But that's if they just so, give it to you. Yeah, yes. giving giving people what you what you called it as the the joy of of movement, America yes. to to you know people that have bought this expansion and don't have Path of Fire. I mean, that's really awesome. That is really cool. Um, in fact, the way that they're treating the beginning of Cantha almost feels like the beginning of an ESO expansion. Don't you don't you feel like when mm-hmm. ESO comes out with a new expansion, it's kind of insular. Uh, no expansion really requires you to do a previous expansion. So you can choose the order in which you do it, which means that every time a new expansion comes out, they have to treat it as if it's a welcome to the game, to a brand new player. Because when you make a character, you start there. Um, It feels to me like they're doing that here more than any other expansion. When you say they're like, hey, let's teach you how combat works. The Mm -hmm. first freaking heart is like, here's how a JP works. Here's how you dodge to get a chest. Here's how you... Uh, do CC and here's how you do combo fields. They're teaching us how to play the game as if you've never played it. They're giving you mounts as if you never did POF and even like the Raptor taxis that Junie loves so much. It feels <laughs> like a cool, <laughs> she loves them. I've it feels like an introduction. One or two of them. <laughs> no, we did all of them to get the achievement. Yes. Oh, there's an achievement. There, is, there achievement. is. If you take a raptor from each of the different locations, you have to take it not to the location, but from the location mm. checks the achievement off. Yeah. Mm. And see, Buddy says, yeah, the heart was one of the highlights. I, I think that it's a really cool way to introduce people to the game. Mm. I would love people to come in. Because, right, if you buy, the, you buy the game, you buy the expansion, you, you get a boost. You get a boost. I mean, you can literally and, start there. Uh, and is it true you get another shared inventory spot, or does that go away when you use no, the boost? you do. You, oh, you, you do. do. See, that's yeah. really when you, nice. you have to use the boost to get rid of it, but then you yeah. get the spot. That's very nice. And you guys know me. I only have the ones that were given to me for free, so I've had, like, two or three. So <laughs> this is big. <laughs> Oh, you only uh, have two or three, man. I, I do. Get you some more. <laughs> that's that's my only real form of KP. For America's sake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want to donate to the uh, Merit Get More uh, inventory. inventory space? Um, no, I, I keep my gating crystal and magnetite shard exchanges there for mm. KP when I really need them. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Virus says, the only thing that sucks is it seems like an intro, but as you touched on before, they didn't advertise the game like they should have, so it's kind of awkward. Uh, and especially because we're feeling like it's empty, mm-hmm. right? It's like, it's this, it's, it's like opening the doors to the new Disneyland and no one's there to walk through the gates, right? There's all this cool introductory flashy stuff and no one is seeing it. Oh, you know what it reminds me of? Uh, Shrek. When they walk into the castle with the little dude and they press the little music box and the music box comes on, but it's like, there's no one there. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. um, that does feel that way. And it is a little awkward, but I really hope that um, 
you know, like we talked about the timing right now being really bad. I think their initial numbers could be worse than we want them to be. But my hope is that people end up here uh, just trickling in over over time. So that's, you know, we'll see. Time will tell. But my my hope is that this turns into a great funnel for the game. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I think it will. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, my my, I, I guess uh, like one last topic before we maybe wrap it up or get the questions. I don't, I don't know. Um, but uh, what what do you guys like on that note about like this being a good funnel into the game or potentially we hope so? Um, once people are funneled in, we need stuff to keep them here. Do you think ArenaNet will continue to pump out content? Do you think they can keep this? Because you know the big thing, right? We get an Ooh. expansion. It's been like three expansions, right? We we get an expansion. In ten years. Yeah, it's it's good. We we're happy. You know, we want more. We always want more with Guild Wars Two. We always want more, and then it is like a desert, um, like an endless desert. I mean, we call it the unending ocean. It should be the unending desert. <laughs> <laughs> the the content dr- desert. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um. Okay. So. Do I think that they'll be able to keep it up? I, I I think that they've not been able to look past this this entire time. I think they've mm-hmm. been really focused on getting this expansion right and finished because in terms of their company being literally turned upside down, right? Like we can't talk about this without mentioning that. Yep. The comp- like NCSoft came in last year, turned the company upside down, fired everybody, hired everybody. And in that time, they made a new expansion, right? Like mm-hmm. they came in, they were told, stop spending money on other projects. We know that this is true. Um, and then there was a declaration of an expansion that we all thought wasn't going to happen and then couldn't imagine happening, especially in this time frame. Mm-hmm. I don't think that they have any ideas beyond this, except to see how this pans out. I think directly how to answer that question is going to be how well this expansion does. I and mean, then unfortunately, I think that's what we're seeing. Maybe a little, I mean, this is all theory, right? We don't know the numbers here, but they're not helping that by not even letting us get a good idea for how many people are there mm-hmm. because of the way that zone issue is. So I think it's going to depend on how how well this does. But I think we could probably keep, you know, like think about the last year. You, Cryptic, and me were not that into the living world story, mm-hmm. right? Now, that con- t- content wasn't exciting. When they came out with the new uh, living world chapter, I didn't really get that excited because I wasn't that yeah. invested in the story. Mm-hmm. Now, what if they just maintain the same release schedule, the same content release schedule, making living world story chapters, but if they were to do it now, I would be much more excited about that, right? Like, first of all, nine new classes, and that's the last one I'd like to t- touch on. I'd like to touch on the elite specs. Mm-hmm. Um, but nine new elite specs is going to keep me entertained for at least a year. And it just is like, that's just the way that I am. I'm going to, I'm going to have like so much fun playing around with all the balance that's coming in May um, or May, June, whatever the summer, it's mm-hmm. going to be great. Um, and the new elite specs that are given to us, but uh, it's, you know, if a new story chapter came out now, I'd be, I'd be stoked. I'd be way more excited than I was before. So maybe, maybe even just a change in direction uh, aside from the change in content uh quantity right maybe just the quality <laughs> is going to make the difference for me so we'll 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 see yeah i mean if they continue that release if they continue that release cycle um and there's you know we have the better story that kind of stuff yeah i i i think that would sustain the game i don't think that would improve the game if that makes sense um, mm. um i mean it's interesting i i even I, I think that the part that really trips me up, though, is that, you know, you you say, uh, you know, this content release cycle that we've had in the past, uh, if the story was better, it would probably have been acceptable. I maybe from a story perspective, that would be true. I, I you know, like when we watch reviews from people like, you know, lazy, you know, lazy peon, bigger Josh Drive Hayes, bigger, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, like MMO reviewers and curators. Um this seems like the biggest complaint we get was there's just never enough content. And, and I don't think, you know, not just from a story perspective, but mechanics and new things like that. Um, you know, we've talked about just adding player housing, stuff like that. Uh, and fishing and fishing. Yeah. I, just we wait have for fishing the fishing now. raids, bro. I mean, they fishing got it right raids, with the fishing. True, just true. wait for the fishing raids. It's, it's good. It's unlimited content. Yeah, I, I think we we need more than just, you know, these story drops that we're getting with, you know, like we were getting in the past here. Um, 
I mean, obviously, you know, they came with maps. They came with things to do. But I, I want them to continue to be innovative with Living World and not just take the things that have already existed and provide us an area to experience a story. Mm. Yes, I think that story, hopefully, I, I'm putting faith that that story will be better than what we've gotten previously, especially with the last Living Story. Um, but I don't, I don't think that will be enough if that's the only thing they do. Uh, I like that Buddy says housing in x Pack 4 confirmed. Carpentry mastery, let's go. Yeah, that would be uh, awesome. That would do it, dude. That would do it yeah. for me. Additional systems are good, right? Um, if, if I'm honest about myself, like, I don't think I need super amounts of innovation. I just want them to continue supporting what I feel like we enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm fully aware you guys have heard me say it before and it's true. Like, I don't think Guild Wars 2 is made for me. I think that it's actually designed for a, a kind of player that I am not a much more casual player that doesn't require raid dynamics or end game competitive you know atmosphere that mm -hmm. that i do i think it's designed for a much more casual story oriented achievement hunting uh completionist type of person mm -hmm. and for for those people i think this game knocks it out of the park i think this expansion is a hundred percent what those people want and the living world story keeps those people happy mm -hmm. um so i i never i never fault them i think for me if if i'd like the story now and they continue adding uh, strike missions that go along with the story. And those strike missions are hard and they add valuable or like challenging CMs with valuable rewards. That's enough. It's enough for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but everybody def definitely does have like a different, a different criteria. Uh, Flying Triangle says, I push back a little on big Guild Wars 2 streamers complaining about a lack of content when they play the game for eight hours a day. Of course, there won't be enough for them. I mean, that is very true. Um, you and and that's what I don't. I always say it, guys. I think the one thing you can rely on me saying is that Guild Wars Two is the perfect game. Uh, except the complaints that you could have about it, the average player is not going to have for years. I really don't. I, I think that's true. I think like if you start Guild Wars Two today, the average player is going to have an amazing experience leveling, a wonderful story experience as they progress, mm -hmm. exploration, map completion, all sorts of things, and the real valid complaints don't really come until you're an old, grumpy, jaded gamer, mm -hmm. right? And by then, have you got your, your 40 bucks worth from Guild Wars 2? Yes, of Probably. course you have. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the thing. Like when Final Fantasy, right, there's so much money so much uh sustainability for content in that game that you play it all the time or not at all same is true for world of warcraft guild wars 2 has found this sort of sweet spot for a very casual player or somebody that does everything there is to do and then knows it's time to put it down and play something else for a while mm -hmm. and then come back when the next living world story chapter comes out and as, as long as you could do that without resentment um then it's a healthy place to be and the game is good i i agree with you i don't think um, I don't think that people who play eight hours a day have the same perspective that the average gamer does, but it is hard, uh, to not compare and contrast. And there are games like Elder Scrolls Online, which has maybe the single most ambitious content release schedule that I've ever seen in my entire life. Every time I ever look at that game, there's like two new DLCs or a brand new expansion announced and it just blows my mind. So you just got to know what you're looking for. Guild Wars 2 has been out for 10 years. It knows its player base. Its player base knows it. I think that for the for the most part, by and large, it's a synergistic dynamic that works for 90% of gamers. Cryptic and I represent that 10%. <laughs> Juni is definitely the 90%. In fact, like now, like would raids being sort of off the table going forward, Cryptic and I were almost like, man, I don't know, maybe we need to find another game. Junie yeah. is like, there's a new expansion and I can fish. I was so excited for fishing. I'm still excited for the fishing. <laughs> now she's excited to play oh, Guild yeah. Wars 2 when the last <laughs> year of me raiding every day had no interest for her to come back to the game. So that's, you know, like, like I said, it's, it just depends on who you are. And what you want. It's very true. So, so let's wrap up on elite specs. Cryptic. What do you what do you like? Do you what are you playing actually uh, going through I, the story? 
I'm going through the story, which is pretty much exclusively what I've been doing. I've been map completing and going through the story. That's ex- pretty much exclusively what I've been doing. Yep. Um, and you know, I've been messing around with like the you know like some builds on the side and stuff like that. Nothing too serious though. I I kind of I'm not like I'm not a a theory crafter. I leave that to in this game at least. In other games, yeah. But in this game, I I leave the theory crafting to the Snow Crows people and the other people in yep. those kind of discords. Um. Uh, that being said, though, I've been playing Untamed because my main character is a ranger. I play all the story on my ranger. Dumping um, some bunnies. Okay. Yes. And yep. <laughs> Untamed is amazing. It's what ranger is always the... For, <laughs> ranger has always had a problem, in my opinion, in open world. Um, it, open world, it it was... You either put... It either was too squishy because you were trying to get DPS out of it, or... It was too tanky because you were trying to build in survivability and didn't have enough. You couldn't then couldn't do enough damage mm-hmm. or the damage you were doing just didn't feel impactful. You know, maybe you were doing a lot of damage, but it's not as cool as that, the, you know, the cool longbow stuff or, you know, going around with, uh, you know, your your great sword and, you know, doing the, the cool slam attack. Um, so. So you find it fun. I find it fun um, I, for two reasons. Well, the second thing that it, it, it impacts is that it actually solves a problem that rangers always had with pets. Um, so when Ranger first came out, pets were cool, but annoying, right? They didn't, they did some stuff, but they didn't really do enough. Um, and they kind of like got in the way and didn't listen to you enough. Um, ArenaNet didn't touch pets at all with Druid. That was a support thing. You know, we needed that for raids and yep. and end game content. Soulbeast came out and it solved what half of the Ranger community wanted, right? Half the Ranger community Keyword wanted their pet to go away. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. yeah, I got gotcha. They wanted the pet to go away. I yeah. hate this pet. It's stupid. It only hurts me. I want to play a Legolas Ranger. I'm not here to play yep. a pet Ranger. This is so dumb. And isn't it funny how everyone's been wanting their pet back now? Like, as yes. time goes? That was the other half of the community that was way, definitely not the, they were the vocal, I don't want to say minority, but they were the, the uh, or not the vocal, uh, they were the silent. I don't want to say the silent minority but they were the silent half because they mm-hmm. had their pet it just wasn't really what they wanted out of their pet yeah. um so the yeah. vocal you know the other vocal half or maybe even majority who wanted what they couldn't have which was the pet to go away got what got their wish and this expansion has provided the other half of what they wanted which is their pet does more things now it mm-hmm. is it is part of your rotation it is part of the interaction it is put a core part of everything you do now, it, 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 you know, um, it gives you access to more skills, not only on the pet, but if you're using the hammer, which I'll get into, you also get more skills on the, on the other side of the hammer. Um, and it interacts with, it interacts with every weapon. I wish it interacted more, but whenever you, um, whenever you're doing skills, uh, in the untamed form or whatever you want to call it, I don't forget the exact name, bad with names. Um, you get this ambush skill, which, um, in your, on your, in your auto attack, which makes you do this, you know, bonus damage, basically do this spin on a hammer. It does a crazy mm. spin. Like you're whirling around, like you're a scrapper. Um, I like the thing web- that it drops all the mushrooms and they blow up. The animations are cool with those. Hammers. Yes. It gets, can it gets can trips now. Um, yeah. and it, yeah. it, it's, it, it's really nice. Um, and it basically, by the way, this entire trait line, it, this is a PVP spec and because it's a PVP spec, it has survivability yep, like built in. Yes. Yep. So, um, you get to do decent damage because it's a PVP spec there. They didn't remove all the damage, but you have survivability built in, which makes it perfect. Those are the builds I love the most in open world because I'm not, I was constantly, and Phoenix can tell you this, I was constantly like either doing crazy damage because I had a basically a, 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 a almost basically a raid build, a slightly tweaked raid build for open world. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was doing crazy damage or decent damage, maybe not crazy, decent damage, but I was going down sillily, you know, in silly ways because I just didn't have enough survivability. Sillily. 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 Uh, <laughs> <and, laughs> this, this really solves it. You know, like I can still use my great sword. I can still use all the other weapons I like. I can use a hammer, which I love using the hammer. Dude, I um, love hammers, bro. Yeah, it's awesome. I wish you could use more of them. Yeah, and it's really, really good. Um, I'm just fascinated by this because I was talking with Azure earlier, mm-hmm. who is like a diehard uh, Bunny Thumper fan from Guild Wars 1, was very yeah. excited for this, I was on the Guild fence about buying EOD and was, mm-hmm. you know, finally talked into it because of how much we all love it, mm-hmm. S- wanted to play, you know, the, the Bunny Thumper and thought it was so boring that he, he swapped immediately to something else. So it's I was just not, fascinated. It's not complicated. If you wanted yeah. something complicated, it's not complicated. It's Ah. It is. This is not. But, but mesmer. This is not. It, yeah, it's satisfying to me. Yeah. Um, it, I also don't think this is again. This is a PvP spec. This is not. 
As far as I can tell, somebody said in chat earlier that it does crazy damage. I, I asked for a link to you know a build or a rotation. I would love it to do crazy damage, but yeah. it doesn't share boons um, despite the fact I that. I think it's Condi, right? If you want to do if you want to do DPS, and it's only like thirty two. Yes, you are correct. It is Condi, yeah. and it's only like thirty two. It's not Which great. Which means no hammer. Yes, no hammer. Ooh. It's sad. <laughs> I mean, I knew that as soon as I saw the hammer. Uh, yeah. And by the way, it, um. Yeah, there's no DPS hammer. I mean, scrapper, but I mean, hey, yo, I was gonna <laughs> say, <laughs> um, I, have, I have been top DPS in groups with you with a hammer scrapper. I mean, that is true, right? It is yeah. the exception, not the rule. <laughs> Those were rigged scenarios. <laughs> Those were rigged you scenarios. Got <laughs> crazy uh, boons, and I, it's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, I think, I think what would have put this over the top. And I wish they had done this, but what would have put this over the top is if every weapon, when you switch to untamed, got untamed skills. Only hammer does. So mm. you get every weapon gets the ambush, and of course you have your pets, which will be your generation for that ambush. Um, but Dragon. only the hammer gets a whole new set of five new skills. Oh, and I see. Yeah, and I, I think that's where the misstep is. That's where it's going to basically lock it down as mm -hmm. PvP open wor or, uh, world, world v world open world build only, um, because you can't. You get tons of boons. I mean, you can. This thing can pump out boons, but only to you. No yeah, one else you. can get them. And you know, because that would have been a beautiful hybrid spec. We were talking about that, right? Like hybridization for DPS to provide yeah. five man boons. It would be nice. And, and we talked. You know, we, we will. You know, maybe we'll get to Great Sword Rev, which is. It, oh. I mean, I. You know, I. It's a. It's a big disappointment for me in the beta. I feel like there's there's the misstep, right? Like this is a class that pumps out boons. Like Just you've for baked though. it. Yeah, you've baked it in. Why not make it for everybody? That yep. can be your hybrid thing. And what all Revenant people wanted was a pure power dps build why did you make that a hybrid <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> yeah that was a little disappointing speaking of disappointing dragon just nailed it dude okay so let me just say in case you guys missed the patch notes there's been a lot of reworking of survivability right they're trying to down some of the most overpowered survivability that exists mm -hmm. barrier self-generated barrier on scrapper nerfed into the ground it went from 15 percent damage conversion to personal barrier to five percent we lost you know two-thirds of barrier uh the same thing with scourge invigorating precision in fact i haven't i haven't pylon kited on rifle dead eyes since this change i don't know how that's gonna go uh so they're obviously trying to make it so that we can't just oh and like removing aegis from the firebrand heal right they're trying to get rid of like overwhelming overtly overpowered passive mitigation mm -hmm. right that's what they seem to be trying to get rid of and i i understand in fact if you ask me what i would want i'd be like yes i'm on board with all of that except the scrapper i'm so sad they did that to my scrapper uh but because i used to i used to accomplish meme things back with hammer scrapper back mm -hmm. in the day but you know One more thing I, I think in the end it's going to be a good thing one more thing for a move off on Tamed because we got so many other ones to get to. Um, why, why, Internet, if you're listening to me, please, please, I'm begging you. I'm, I'm begging you. Uh oh. Why, why did you make the pets look puke green when you're in untamed form? You have these oh. beautiful pets. We have a phoenix in the game. Yeah. We have all these beautiful, a white tiger, all these beautiful, beautiful pets. Yeah. And when you go to Untamed, they all, every single one of them, I know. turns into this puke green color. It is Bro, hideous. It's the same thing with the freaking soul beast. Like yeah. I was on board with getting rid of the pet. I don't mind that. First of all, I just want to I want to let you guys know it's the same thing with mechanist. I cannot stand the pathing for pets. If you summon your pet, first of all, they're like eight feet in front of you and four or five feet to the right of you. And they will not let you get close to them. You cannot stand with your pet next to you. It will run away from you. It literally needs to be in that weird, mm -hmm. you know, position away from you. So yeah. that, it's a little thing, but I hate it. It drives no, me nuts. I, yeah, I um, and then I was, so I was on board with Solby's getting rid of pets. I was like, that's a cool way to do it. It made me think of Warlock from old school World of Warcraft that would use demonic sacrifice. It would sacrifice your pet demon and give you a buff depending on what the buff was or what the pet was and make you very strong. It was a cool thematic choice. Um, but when they do, they force a green animation around you constantly. 
right? It's that swirly green stuff. Like, what if I want to be a non-green ranger? Why are you forcing a color scheme on me yeah. that I don't want? And it's, and it's even worse with the pets, kind of, because mm-hmm. you have to have them. They're yeah. green, and it's not a good look. The same thing is true, I, and, and then this is the next class that I'll talk about. Obviously, we can't go through all nine. It's going to take forever. But one of the things that it's I've good. been playing is the Virtuoso. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And the daggers are cool. Yeah. And I hate them. Mm-hmm. I don't like five floating daggers above me all the time. It mm-hmm. first of all, it forces a color scheme that I may or may not want in that moment. And it is like a weirdly oppressive animation that you can't get rid of. At the very least, if I stow my weapons, make them go away. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I don't think they should show unless you're actively in combat. Mm-hmm. That that's that's me. Oh, then I would really like was, them, but I feel like it's bad. Why was it daggers and not song notes? That's just such a straight because they win. because it's not a bard, man. No matter yeah, how it's much virtuoso, it I should know. be song notes. But I, I mean, this is and, you know, Phoenix. Phoenix says uh, uh, blight gives an obnoxious green color on Harbinger. This is just like begging for yep. Poe's skill thing, and you know, change your skill look in the in the cash shop. You know, in the in the path of shop, exile. Or, he's talking about yeah, yeah, path of exile. They have. Um, at pretty much every skill in the game, you can change the look of it and it costs you some money, but you can purchase it's something a gem that store will, item. It's a gem store item that yeah. will change the look of your skill to something that you might find more appealing there. You know, they don't have, it's not, there aren't infinite combinations, but they give you a couple of choices and you can find something that matches, you know, what theme you're going for. I read it now. Um, take my money, bro. Just yeah, take it. Just exactly. make these things so I can give you gems. Like, exactly. let's go. <laughs> and we've always said like pink attitudes that we've always said that fashion wars is the end game yes. of this of this game why are they messing with it they with shouldn't be messing with it terrible terrible uh i also want to i also want to read what phoenix said uh she said i understand merrick says in a pained voice recalling the first time he tanked sh with zero <laughs> toughness <laughs> see those were the good old days i i tanked uh sh which is one of the hardest hitting bosses in the game probably the hardest with the uh, hammer scrapper in full berserker and that is at once one of the coolest things i've ever done and absolutely proves that it probably should be nerfed right I, I guess that that's what it comes down to um but yeah in terms in terms of aesthetic i think that uh i am i was really turned off by the fact that uh virtuoso is not a bard it's called Mm -hmm. virtuoso and if you see my virtuoso in game you guys are gonna see i'm role playing it as a bard i'm using orchestral weapons i got the minstrel uh behind the mound of dead bards (laughs) hide behind the mound of dead bards (laughs) any gamers darkness rising fans out there probably not no okay there's a couple there's a couple when are we doing the watch party in the discord for that yes hey uh, off topic uh, sorry to to say this in the podcast but um when i'm up there tomorrow we're gonna go get waffles right we gotta get waffles two waffles uh, absolutely yes. absolutely 100 yes yeah. to find some waffles cryptic oh is God. coming to visit us tomorrow <laughs> up here in new york so yeah. there will be uh man we should have hosted like a real life yeah in-person we gotta do that podcast. at some point we've got to. yeah that's that true that would be sick um okay so obviously we can't go through all of them there's so many things i think we'll probably cryptic like what do you think like a uh, eod this yeah. is EOD first impressions. Yeah. It'll be like EOD final impressions next week. Uh, or in final? a couple of weeks, maybe. Okay, next next, yeah. next impression, uh, medium <laughs> impressions. We'll go over medium. the rest of the elite specs. Uh, we'll talk about the strikes more because you'll have done them. And yes. we'll talk about the end of the story. Yes. Right? So there's still um, a lot to go could, through. So, uh, I mean, maybe this is a question for chat. Obviously, guys, please take part in our Discord. Yes. Um, go ahead and, uh, you know, comment in the Coffee Break channel, especially if you uh you know feel one way or the other about this but how do you feel about a spoiler story uh at least section of the of the the podcast yeah yeah i feel like this was too early for that yes absolutely so like next week probably would feel much better to do that um just so you guys know there's been a lot of linking of the discord i really hope you guys will come and join it it's a really big friendly active community we play a ton of games together including just you know Guardic phone, fall guys, first person shooters, a lot of little random stuff on the side, and everyone is very welcoming. We also have a section in the Discord devoted to the podcast. So we let people know what our topic is ahead of time, gives you the opportunity to discuss things and share your thoughts so that we can share them on stream. Uh, so I hope you guys will come and join us for that to discuss things and just to hang out. You guys are looking for a group of friends? We got the coolest group around. Look, look at Cryptic. He's so cool. 
You could be his friend. Come join the Discord. It's true. <laughs> You should have used Junie. People want to be actually be friends with Junie. Oh, no. <laughs> she's she's prettier than both of us. Come. That's ex- yeah, yeah, it's true. It's, true. it's uh, good like America's uh, titillating conversational skills. Yeah, and then, yeah, that that's what scares people away. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess we'll probably wrap it up here. Like I said, we do this every single Friday, guys. So if you're interested in this, if you had fun, if you'd like to interact, we'd love to interact with you. Make sure to come and join the Discord and tune in every single Friday uh, at around 8 or 9 p.m. We always post on Twitter when we're about to go live, so hopefully we will see you for that. I want to give an enormous shout out for our raids tonight, especially Loranity with that giant raid. That was really awesome of you. Thank you guys for the follows and the subs. It means the world. Also, I want to give a special shout out to our Kofi subscribers. It really makes the biggest difference for us. So thank you so much for that. Uh, that is Null Point Origin, Zang, Art in fact, and of course Maddox. Uh, and, and now Angie. Yes, Angie. Oh, man, there should be some fun stuff with that. Thank you, Angie. 